that it's five o'clock somewhere <laughs> right here under heavy clouds it's 62 degrees winds out of the northwest variable at 16 gusts to 25 miles an hour and they will make their presence felt as the drivers have climbed aboard and they're waiting for the order uh, to get this show on the road. The last time we had a rain delayed race here, Kyle Busch won it on a Tuesday for car owner Roger Penske. But now a great change of weather from what we've seen all weekend when these cars were last on track on Friday. And now what are we going to have that we've had rain all night, rain all day, rain all night? Well, I'm a little confused. I know you'll find that as I know you won't believe that, but I, I talked to some of the drivers and they're a little confused too. I thought the track being clean and green would be fast and these cars would really take off quick. Then I talked to some more guys. They said, no, 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 DW, it's going to be loose and we're going to be lucky to hang on to them for 20 laps. So we're going to have to wait and see who's right and who's wrong. Well, for some of those guys that qualified up front, they trimmed out their cars to go really fast in qualifying. How's that going to work for these guys <laughs> oh, in the first right. couple corners? But because of those conditions being so much cooler, I think this might be a gamble that really pays off. But, Larry, how are these conditions going to uh, affect these teams today? I tell you, Jeff, the, the key word all weekend long since we got to Michigan was unknown. Well, today, that word has all capital letters. To Mike's point, other than one qualifying lap, 72 hours since any of these race cars turned a lap, and so much has changed, including, as you guys documented, the weather. As a crew chief, I am anticipating these first laps to what my driver tells me that car is doing, and for a lot of crew chiefs, I'm anticipating that competition caution around lap 20 to see what adjustments I have to make and I need to make to make this car better. Thanks, Larry. They begin to roll off down pit road your starting lineup will scroll across the bottom of the screen we did have a little entertainment here yesterday even though the cars only got to make pace laps Bubba Wallace got a football from his coach and started playing it around tossing it to Ryan Blaney and then Corey LaJoy got involved and then the fans got involved and they started down there toward the end of pit road and by the time they were done they were already up at the turn four into the grandstand Daniel Hemrick brought refreshments and uh, LaJoy, it seems, was taught to throw that ball left-handed by none other than the NFL Jim Kelly when he was part owner of the Frank Cece car that Corey's dad drove in the Boy, Bush Series. He did yeah, a darn good job, I have to say. He may have more of a future in other sports if he wanted to. What do you say we uh, dial up our pole sitter, Joey Logano? Hey, Joey, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got a copy? I got you loud and clear. What's happening? Oh, man, we're going racing. We're excited. Uh, been 48 hours since you've been in the car. A lot cooler conditions. All that rain has washed the rubber away. What are you expecting on that Pennzoil Ford here today? Uh, well, expect the unexpected, I guess. You never know what's going to happen here. Uh, not much tire wear, so I'm sure strategy will come into play quite a bit. One thing we do know is we have a very fast shell Pennzoil Ford, and uh, we know how bad we want to win here in Michigan driving this blue oval. So we'll see if we can make it happen. All right, thanks to ta uh, for talking to us. Good luck. All right, have yeah, the Ford drivers went to dinner with Edsel Ford at the Henry Ford Estate in Dearborn Fairlane. And boy, they got the message because Ford's qualified in eight of the top 10 spots this weekend. Well, what do you say we dial up Martin Tricks? He's starting back in 16th spot. Martin Tricks Jr., it's TW. You got me, buddy. Yeah, I got you, buddy. All right, look, I did the math. It's your time. Look, you finished first at Richmond. You finished 20th at Talladega. You finished first at Dover. You finished 19th at Kennedy. You finished first at Charlotte. You finished 35th last week. Where are you going to finish today, buddy? Uh, hopefully first. I hope your math is correct. We'll see. Oh, it's it, it's correct. Those are statistics. I didn't make that up. So uh, you're looking good. Car, how's he, how do you think the car will be on this fresh, uh, on this green racetrack? I'm not real sure. I think we'll just have to feel out, kind of go from there. Uh, we got 20 laps to that competition yellow, so... We'll, we'll have uh, time to work on it pretty quick. So just try to hang on to some track this year. Hopefully be able to make our way forward with this auto owner's car and uh, hopefully have a great day here in Michigan. Glad to be on track after 27 hours away. <laughs> yeah, well, we're all glad to get this race started. Uh, thanks for talking to us, buddy, and good luck today. Yeah, y'all have fun up there. We will if you will. <laughs> Let's see how much fun we can have down on Pit Road for a Monday Monday. Jamie Little.
The sun is peeking through. We're excited for racing this evening. Well, Brad Kozlowski and the two team, he will do anything to win here at Michigan at his home track. It's something he has not done in 19 tries. He told me yesterday he'll give up stage points. He'll give up stage wins if it means it sets him up for a win at the end of this thing. I talked to his crew chief, Paul Wolf. He made an air pressure adjustment to start this race, and that is the only adjustment he hopes to make all day. He wants to stay away from chassis adjustments. Don't waste that time on pit road. Matt Yoakum. Jamie, this weekend marks the one year anniversary of Clint Boyer's first and only win here in the Irish Hills of Michigan. And it was big for a number of reasons, but especially this. It put the manufacturer trophy, the Michigan Heritage Trophy, back in the hands of Ford after spending three races with Chevrolet. Now, Booger, Ravage, and Boyer are very confident about what they brought here to Michigan, but there's so many unknowns with this new package, but they still think this could be the day that they score another one. But one thing that is known, at the end of the day, you're going to see another manufacturer emblem right here on the trophy. Regan Smith. Well, Matt, perhaps no driver looks forward to coming to Michigan more than Kyle Larson. Three wins here over the past five years. He's very good at this racetrack. I asked him before he climbed in the car what he could take from those wins, if anything. That's where the bad news begins. Absolutely nothing. It's completely different today with this set of rules for these drivers on the racetrack. His day Friday, very loose with that race car. Significant changes overnight. He said he'll find out when we do at the start of the race if he can get from the 22nd position to the front. Thanks, Regan. This race is very important to all the manufacturers, being uh, just 60 miles west of Detroit. We're used to hearing, uh, uh, reading a lot of smack on Twitter. The manufacturers got involved. Uh, Greg Biffle, 1,000 wins for Ford. Congratulating. Note the picture of all the ex-Ford drivers. And Ford says, yeah, but we prefer the championships they won with us. And Toyota says, clean the dust off those trophies every now and then. And Ford retweets. Joey Logano will be taking it back in November, says Toyota. Talking smack on Twitter, and that is the Heritage Trophy that Michigan International Speedway awards to each cup-winning manufacturer. And, and that's why we love coming here to this track and, and being close to Detroit and getting those automakers uh, getting kind of a little riled up and, and, and talking smack. That was fun. Yeah, we think it's funny, but they're serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 400 miles, 200 laps around this two-mile D-shaped super speedway. 60, 60, and 80 laps are the stage lengths. 55 down pit road. Fuel window is about 10 laps shy of the first two stage distances. And the grip level four on a scale of five. Uh, NASCAR told us they would have a competition caution because of the rain. And they were a little vague. They said around lap 20. Yeah, well, they know that at a track like this, uh, this size, sometimes those teams will play a little bit of games and in, in how they strategize. But I don't think that's going to be a factor here today. You, you can't come down pit road here uh, under green and not go down the lap. Well, right now, we're right where we were yesterday <laughs> on the final pace lap with the lights out on the safety car, ready to go green. Yesterday, the skies opened up. Today, I think they're going to wait on DW. I think you're right, Mike. And it's Monday, Monday, and uh, these guys are ready to go racing. I'm ready to send them on their way. Want all my fans and everybody to get up on their feet because we're getting ready to send these cats off into the first turn. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys, and let's bang it up. Time still outside. Still in mind. Still there, Danny. Still there. Outside here, Still there. No room behind it. Denny Hamlin to the lead from Joey Logano. Yeah, I don't know if that's Yeah, it's going to work. He got in front of Logano and was able to hold his spot. Yeah, nice was, move. Uh, nice move. Bold move by Denny Hamlin. Getting that big run, using that big box of air behind the 22 car and stepping out and making it happen going into turn three. You remember we talked to Denny yesterday and he said they were surprised how well they qualified because they had really kind of set their car up for the race. That showed he's got a pretty good race car right there when he just drove into turn three quicker than the uh, 22 of Logano did. Well, and he also knew that if you got in front of Joey Logano, you're going to be in clean air and have even more grip. And we heard Logano say, I need to be out front. We got our car set up to run out front in clean air. 
Toyota first, Penske Fords, 234, and Kyle Busch in and amongst the Hendrick cars, mid pack. Kyle lost four spots on the break, 19th. Well, we've seen that inside lane of Kevin Harvick and Eric Almirola lost some positions at the original start. So we're going to have to watch how you position yourself on these restarts and how that's going to affect which lane choice you use. I think Boyer got the worst of it. He lost eight spots on the start. Yeah, that inside never seems to be as quick as the outside. You get a nice sweep down into a corner, and that seemed to be where the speed is. We saw that with Logano when he qualified. Really had a nice line into turn three. That seems to really pay off. Alex Bowman mixing it up. Goes to the inside of Ryan Newman. Going to make that pass. No, we got it. The aid of Daniel Hemrick, rookie Hemrick, is going to make it three wide, go through the middle. Boy, I tell you, Boyer is struggling. But for the right lead. Here. here comes Legato. Can't complete that pass coming off two. Oh, he'll complete it here because he, he, he planned it perfectly in how he lined up on that quarter panel to side draft the 11. I tell you, you got to watch out for is that 21 car, the Wood Brothers car. They have a huge, they have a great history here, Mike. They won the first race here with Keo Yarborough a long time ago. That 21 car could be a factor today. Kozlowski to the inside, going to drop in fifth in line behind Harvick. And there's something else we're going to see a lot of. If you don't complete that pass, you get side by side like Brad Kozlowski did on Danny Hamlin. It's going to allow that outside lane to line up and use the draft and go right on by. And that's what's going to happen to Paul Menard right here. You see Logano drop down. Mike tried to give a little help to the 21. Another Ford trying to help him maybe get his way back up near the front. Whoa, it's nervous times and a little edgy for the 21 of Paul Menard coming off of turn four. Yeah, he just couldn't get cleared getting back in line behind Harvick. Mike, there are six blue ovals at the front, with the exception of one, and that's uh, Denny Hamlin. He's right in the middle of this whole crowd. Boy, the four car, Kevin Harvick, very confident in his race car. He drove down into turn one and just turned to the inside, went side by side with Denny Hamlin. I don't know if he's going to complete this pass, but he has a fast race car. Harvick goes for third. Kozlowski aligns with him on the bottom. Menard to follow. The other Penske car did not get off to a great start. That is Ryan Blaney. Started 13th. He's back in 19th. In the uh, red number 12 this week. Mike, you get, such a, you get two cars side by side, you're running behind them. You get a huge draft. You think you can pull out and make that pass. If you don't, you're going to fall back. There goes Harvick finally completing that second place pass of Denny Hamlin. Hamlin went up the hill just a bit in one, opened the door. I, I've seen his car wiggle a couple of times. He's been pretty aggressive with it. I think he likes his car, but I don't know if it's quite underneath him as much as he'd like it to be right now. Martin Truex up four on the right of your screen from where he started. Whoa, Hamlin way up the track. Uh, Looked like car might be a little tight off the corner there behind another car. Almirola giving a good push as they come down the front straightaway off into the corner. He was all over the back bumper of Keselowski. Great conditions I'm seeing for race. Oh, Denny Hamlin gets really loose. I think that was Brad Keselowski on his rear bumper. Might have loosened him up a little bit, turning into turn one. But this track temp has come down, overcast skies. This is the most grip this track's seen all weekend. And here comes Kurt Busch. He had a great run out of turn number two. Now gets in line behind Menard. He's the leading Chevrolet in seven. But I like what I'm seeing, Mike. I mean, these guys are staying all really bunched up here, close together, a lot of drafting. You make the wrong move, you fall back, get in line, start all over again. Yeah, Darrell, it seems like even if you don't have a great corner and you have to back up a little bit, as long as you don't lose a bunch of spots, it seems like by the end of the next straightaway, you're already caught up using that draft. Yeah, it seems that way. You look at the 21 car. He's going to he's going to give Balmarola a little shove down the back here, see if I can help you. Just trying to help you, buddy. But I think we're going to see more of that, where somebody's going to lose the momentum and have to slam the door like Eric Almirola did on the 21 of Paul Menard. Menard jumps to the inside, trying to move up into the fifth position. Oh, but the whole line of cars is on the outside. Better get back in line in a hurry. <laughs> this thing about Menard, he made, you know, he went to the inside, tried to make a pass a couple laps ago. He didn't make it, and look where he ended up. He's all the way back in sixth spot. He was trying to battle for the lead there just a few laps ago. Harvick looking on the bottom, nothing there. What I like about this is nobody's running away. Not at all. 
Clint Boyer trying to hold off Daniel Hemrick. Wow. And that looked like the nine car Chase Elliott going after the 14 Clint Boyer. And again, he got side by side, did not complete the pass. That allowed Daniel Hemrick to get a nice draft. 10 laps complete in Michigan. Joey Logano has been out front for seven of them. It's here and it's available today at your local Chevy dealer. The all new Silverado. The strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. 14 laps complete in Michigan. One day later, but Joey Logano leading Kevin Harvick. And about five to go to the competition caution. Watch Kyle Larson in the 42 top of your screen. Yeah, he sees these two side drafted. He goes to the inside. Oh, sorry, that's actually William Byron goes to the inside. Larson says, no, no, I've got the run. I'm going to go straight through the middle. Goes by both of them. And Larson picks up two spots there. So he is plus four from the start of the race. What I'm seeing, not only do you have to have a good race car, but you've got to be strategic in how you make my, your moves, how you get the run. You can't just go up there and get a run like this and pass him. Now he's got to use that side draft, hope that that momentum takes him into the corner and clears that car as it is going to do work for Larson. And you hope somebody behind you chooses to go along with you. Yeah, you just pull out, Jeff, and it's like hitting a wall. You just stall. There's no air to pull you forward. Kyle Busch trying to put the move on Ryan Newman, who had to pedal it a couple of laps ago off turn two when things jammed up in front of him. And that loss of momentum uh, for Newman put him back uh, four spots below where he started. I think Kyle Busch is having a whole lot of fun no, right now. No, he's, he's not, he's he's not, not going be, anywhere. No, he hasn't. Forward, he's going backward. This is for third place, three quarters of a second behind the lead. So Larry, we're going to have that competition yellow because of uh, the overnight rain. What are we going to see? 
Yeah, Mike, we were talking about this at our meeting earlier today, and, and you just have to be careful as a crew chief of either over-adjusting or under-adjusting for two reasons. One, the track was green, no rubber whatsoever on it after all the rain we've had. And the other big variable, these tires are the ones they qualified on over 48 hours ago. Saturday morning, they've been sitting for two days, and now every set of tires that goes on there will be a set of stickers. So you, you feel like, okay, I need to adjust it, but I don't need to go crazy until I see what we've got once some rubber goes down and we start putting sticker tires on. Yeah, you know this, Larry and, and Jeff, when you, put, when you have the tires you qualified on, that heat cycle, kind of cures them out, makes them a little bit harder than the fresh rubber you're getting ready to put on that hadn't been on the car before. So that can change the way your car handles dramatically. Suarez coming back after Ricky Stenhouse. Two Fords with Kyle Busch's Toyota just behind. 18th place. Eric Almarola had a great qualifying run here, started outside pole, but during our last practice he also had the best long run averages over both 15 and 20 laps. So that's a car that's fast, but also looked like it would handle really well today. Yeah, I think he I think he's pretty content to be right here in third place. I mean, Logano Logano said, Mike, I got to be out front. My car is set up to run out front and he's been able to stay there. I think that the four and the eight and the 10 both are pretty co uh, comfortable right here until we get that caution. Slagman so has the caution flag in hand, has yet to display it. And we saw Denny Hamlin starting to lose a few positions, yet his teammate Eric Jones has been flying up through the mid pack. Yeah, watch that 11 car, Jeff. I think he's pushing really bad. He gets really high off both corners, loses a lot of, lot of, lot of ground. Joey Logano completes 20 laps. The field now coming down the front straightaway and cycling through. Back to about 30th place. Put it out, put it out. This will be the competition caution. So what we learn in 20 laps? Well, we learned that Joey Logano's got a fast car. He's out front. We have Kevin Harvick's right there with him. And, and, and I know it, it's not a big surprise, but Elmer Ola's right there with these guys as too. Paul Menard's got a great car. And Jones has really, really moved up through the field. Eric Jones started 14th. He's gained nine spots more than anyone. He is from Byron. Kozlowski from Rochester Hills. No Michigan-born driver has ever won a cup race here on their home track. And this race, I, uh, both of them have said, this is like our Daytona 500. This is our home track. Our family's here. Our friends are here. They want to win this race as much as they want to win any race on the schedule. Just almost wonder if I wouldn't be a little nervous to have a really good race car right now. I think there's just so much that this track has changed over that first run and what's going to happen on this next set of tires and as this race progresses. And the sun pokes through as we look forward to tomorrow. All eyes will be on Alex Morgan, Carly Lloyd, and the U.S. Women's National Team in group play against Thailand. Coverage begins 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 Pacific. All matches of the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup live on Fox or FS1 and streaming on the Fox Sports app. So NASCAR will open pit road. When they start the race with a competition caution coming, teams are not allowed to stop and add fuel prior to the display of the competition yellow. So now they'll be in for Sunoco race fuel and Goodyear tires. And there's some fast talking going on right now, Mike. These drivers are telling those crew chiefs what I need. Regan Smith. Well, Paul Menard's going to pit from the fourth position. His race power has been very good so far. Just a touch on the free side, especially when he is above the seam in turns three and four. They're going to do two tires on this race car. That should tighten him up. No other adjustments. Matt? Only one top ten for Eric Almirola here at MIS. He was free on entry down in turn one. The balance was good everywhere else. His teammate, Kevin Harvick, pitting in box four. He pitted at this end of the race track last year. He was free in turns one and two. And Joey Logano, he will follow the 11 of Hamlin off. Hamlin was loose. Logano said he was a little bit tight down in one and two. Comfort was great in three and four. A lot of varying strategies, including some gas only. And Kevin Harvick losing seven spots. We'll recap 
after this. We have found video of the alleged performance Friday night that we spoke of yesterday. Yes, that's Jeff Gordon on guitar. What's uh, Kyle Larson doing? Checking his phone? Yeah, he's checking his phone. Uh, Bubba Wallace back here on the drums. Uh, these boys were putting on a show. And you hear the song they're singing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this and then the Bubba went to work. <laughs> Bubba Wallace, unbelievable on the drums. Got a lot of talent. <laughs> And that's just a typical Friday night at the track. <laughs> Safe to say a good time was had by all. Yep. A fun time out there in the infield. So we had drivers taking on fuel only. Now watch Jimmy Johnson. He takes on gas only. And as he starts to come out of his pit stall, Matt Benedetto on the left is coming in. And, and this is where communication is so important between the spotter, the crew chief, and the team and how You've got to pay attention to that car that's going to be coming down pit road when you do gas and go, and you're not going to be in your box for very long. It's a pretty big hit, Jamie. Yeah, quite a bit of damage on the right front. Unfortunate for the 48 team. They had a really good practice session, both practice sessions. Friday, he was doing good, said the car felt good up until this point, but that miscommunication now has caused him to come down pit road three different times now. Yeah, Jamie, it, it actually lifted that 95 up off the ground just a little bit, so it hit him pretty hard. And Kevin Harvick lost seven spots. What did you see there, Larry? Yeah, they were a little bit slow on the right front. You can see the comparison right there between Joey Logano's 22. That's over. That's about a second and a half difference. Both of them changing right side tires, Mike. We're back under green. Logano 
Choosing the outside. Denny Hamlin inside. Joey drops right down in front of the 11. I think Mike I think we see out of Joey exactly what he he said I've got to have clean air. I've got my car set up to run out front and lead this race and so far so good. But what impressed me so much about Joey Logano he lost the lead to Denny Hamlin which he might do again here but was able to regain it so he's got a pretty good handling race car not just a fast race car. It, it, it looked to me like the 11 car might be a little tight Jeff he was pushing up the hill uh, before that caution and he looks a little tight right here on this restart. Well, and I don't know if two tires are going to help Denny Hamlin with that condition. Almirola leading that inside lane and now Logano drops down in front of it Hamlin looked outside nothing there. We're going to try to single file it out here. Sorry, I was wrong. I thought Danny took two tires, but he's actually fuel only. What about the 11, Matt? And Chris Gabart told me before the race the biggest adjustment he can make to that 11 car is track position. They went with fuel only. The car was free that first run. Slight chassis adjustment. The car was on the splitter. We'll see how it does at the beginning of this run if it still holds true. Martin Truex, <laughs> where did he come from? Well, right now, he's sitting in third place. And Mike, if you look at the numbers, I mean, if you look at his finishes over the last six or seven weeks, he should win today based on what he's done over the last few weeks. They had a quick stop and restarted fifth, taking on fuel only. Truex now third. Yeah, he sounded pretty confident when the race started, and uh, here he is. Worked his way right up into the battle for the lead. And you could tell in that first 20 lap run, he had a good race car. He could run lower on the racetrack than just about anybody he was around. And Mike, a lot of a lot of experimenting going on right now. Where to pass, when to pass, how do I make a pass? Because with this aero package, this engine package, you don't just pull out and go buy somebody. As Jeff said a bit ago, you got to kind of strategize a little bit when you're going to make your move. Almirola backing up to fifth as Eric Jones comes around the outside and Brad Keselowski joins that battle. Jones has done a nice job of working his way right to the front. He's running fourth right now. He was. Well, unfortunately um, he's got two Fords that want to gang up on him. But Brad Keselowski and Eric Almirola. And there's Bowman. I mean he's got himself in the you know with a good stop. Bowman also along with Eric Jones and the 19 of Mark Truex Jr. working their way up through mid pack at the start of this race up to the front now. Alex Bowman gained a lot of spots in the first 20 laps and then he took on fuel only to get a good restart position. Well I, I didn't hear anybody say that they were worried about tire wear. Uh, I think sticker tires that we documented early in this. I think they make your car better. But if you got a good car and you're happy just gas it and go. Well let's watch Kurt Busch make a bold move. Yeah. Wow. Not for sure he would not just ride in behind on the rear bumper of the two car. I thought he would take him three wide. Second place on the right. Uh oh. Yeah, and Martin Truex Jr. not going to complete mm -hmm. this pass and now see Eric Almirola lining up using the draft of the 11 of Hamlin. Here comes the 20 teammate to Martin Truex Jr. I think that's what we're seeing Mike is everybody is kind of playing around right now. How am I going to make a pass because again you don't just drive by somebody you got to set him up. See Paul Menard kind of stall out here trying to get to the inside of the four of Kevin Harvick and Harvick gets the boot from Austin Dillon. <laughs> he sure did. Uh, you know Kevin Harvick lost that track position not seeing the strength out of his car even though he has a little bit fresher tires than some of those around him. There's Second a, place. There's a guy that's got a fast race car. That 10 car over here. Of Almirola, that thing is fast. Yeah, but if he doesn't complete this pass on Denny Hamlin, I see a lot of cars that might line up on the outside lane. Boy, Kurt Busch likes the inside, doesn't he? <laughs> you see, uh, you nope. see the 22 drop down, try to help the 10 get get the 10 up to the. Uh, this is going to help Amarola right here. Here we are. Kind of surprising on that move. Mark Truex Jr. is a teammate to Denny Hamlin. Everybody's your friend at this point in the race. If you can get that, somebody can help you, you go with them. Now, now Mark, Truex is saying, mm. hey, Eric Jones, could you yeah, help yeah. me out with that same favor? Whoa. 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 Well, that, that was a crossover on the straightaway. Well, you just can't break that momentum. When you've got the run and somebody else's momentum gets broken, you've just got to keep it going. It kind of reminds me of Daytona and Talladega. But Truex has another great launch. So does Harvick. Here comes Harvick. Yep. And Menard. And there goes Menard. <laughs> the 
Kurt Busch just does not give up. He's the only Chevrolet in the top eight, but he keeps diving to the bottom and trying to complete those passes. I tell you what, though, Mike, I watched that four car. He can hold his own down the straightaway. He's a little, I've seen this for several weeks now, a little quicker down the straightaway than most. I'd be really curious to watch Denny Hamlin. I've seen him run a little bit higher line, almost getting out into the gray. I don't know if that's because his car's taking him out there or is he finding a little bit of grip out there? Well, we listened in on the Ganassi team and the number one. I don't know if they're talking about air getting to the nose of the right front or air pressure in the right front tire. I don't know what he's talking about either, but I can tell you something. That guy is always thinking. Yeah, and they did take two tires on that last stop, so that might just be some information getting back to his crew chief about, hey, you know, maybe let's think about lowering that air pressure on the right front tire. 35 complete, 60 laps in stage one. We salute the fans who came back for this late Monday afternoon race like this young fella. Side by side at Michigan. Now 21 laps to go in stage one. Look how close they run. When was the last time we saw bump drafting at Michigan? <laughs> I wouldn't like that, I know that. It pushed me <laughs> off in the corner, I'm already loose. We're gonna see it all day. But look how they're lined up, Mike. I mean, nobody's getting away from anybody. They're staying pretty bunched up here, which is what this package does. It keeps you in a tight group. And the guys who hate that are fellows like Boyer, Larson, and Bush. They're back in 13th through 15th and just have not been able to gain ground since the restart. Mike, you got to embrace it. Whatever it is, you got to embrace it. This is the rules. This is the package. Let's work on it. Make it work. Yeah, but there's guys that are liking it, like Kevin Harvick. Yeah, he got shuffled back, didn't have a great pit stop, but he has a fast race car, and he's been making up spots just about every other lap. Actually, Larson's gained nine since the restart. Kyle Busch has gained four. But they're mid-pack while we watch Eric Jones 
hold on to second ahead of Kurt Busch, Almirola and Almirola and Harvick, the top five. Harvick's done a nice job. I mean, the slow pit stop got way back, but he's worked his way back up in the top five. Got a good car. Boy, is that sunlight? Is that what that is? Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> something we haven't I seen. I know it's in been a while. Miles. But that's sunlight. And, it and does not get dark here till about 9.15 at night. Oh, oh, one oh, car. Oh, oh. Yeah, I think Kurt Busch, boy, if he didn't touch the wall, it was very, very close. And that's going to cost Kevin Harvick oh, some spots. It took, it took Harvick right with him. I, I'm not sure if, they, if he touched the wall or not, but. You see the 10 of Amarillo well, running a little bit the wide. Oh, he gets loose. Oh, yeah, he got it. A little right rear damage. That caused Harvick to have to check up a little bit. Ooh. Wow. Well, we've seen where it does not take much damage on that right rear or any of those right sides to push that fender in on the tire and cut it down. Great camera work. Kevin Harvick lost his momentum there, Matt, fell back to seventh. That hiccup might cost him big. He's finally back in line. Harvick telling Rodney Childers that we've hurt the front end. It's not turning, and we have absolutely no grip at this juncture. Denny Hamlin restarted outside the front row. He's back to 14th after well, taking fuel only. Yeah, really man. wide off of turn four there. I think he. I think you're right, DW. I think that car's very tight. And he didn't change tires. You know, I was surprised they didn't change tires. I think the car is really, really tight. He shoves up the hill almost every on both ends of the track. And we heard where Chris Gaypart said, if I just give you clean air and get you out front, get you track position, I think you'll be fine. Well, we found it, we saw how hard Denny Hamlin fought to get the lead to try to get that clean air. But once he didn't get it, it's really been costly. Yeah, I think he's abusing that right front tire right now because that car is just way, way too tight. I think that was a concern a lot of guys had, Mike, that they were going to be loose in the race or around other cars, and I think it's turning out to be just the opposite. Hamlin back to 16th now after restarting second. Joey Logano has now led 40 of 43 laps. Twelve laps to go in stage one on under mostly cloudy skies here in Michigan. The sun pokes out. Joey Logano continues to lead. He's been out front for 45 laps now. 
But the new second place car is Eric Almarola. Here's how he passed Eric Jones for second place. Yeah, he gets a nice run off of turn four. Has a car behind him too, but he just pulls down, gets right to the edge of the rear bumper of that 20 car, and that pulls him ahead, allows him to keep that momentum going into the corner. I mean, he, it, Eric Amarola's car is handling so well that he just made that look easy. Now, can he do it on our leader, Joey Logano? Logano actually, I think, helped him make that pass, Jeff, down into turn one there. I'd, I'd be surprised if that 22 looks like you can follow me, but I just don't know if you can pass me or not. And I almost wonder if the 20 of Eric Jones in that situation, did he have to check up a little bit coming off the corner? And Eric Almarola saw that. Top four, two Fords, one Toyota, one Chevrolet, and then Kurt Busch in fifth, Regan. Well, a few laps ago, we saw Kurt Busch brush the wall coming off a of turn two. He asked the team to check it very calmly on his radio. Very calm, cool, and collected from Kurt. They checked it, said the right rear fender looks fine. The report from the driver, just a little bit looser with the race car since he's hit that wall. Okay, third place changes hands. Bowman moving up. Yeah, you know, now, Mike, sometime you will say, look, I can't move forward. This is as good as I can do. I'll let you go. Not that he pulled, but he'll, I'll let you go. I'm not going to fight you, and maybe I can follow you through. That's twice now coming off the corners. First time off of turn four for Eric Jones, where Eric Almarola got a run. And then that last time by, that was off of turn two, where Eric Jones lost a little more uh, momentum again, allowing the 88 of Bowman to get by. Well, I think what he's seeing is the 22 and the 10 are hooked up, and they're driving off and leaving the, the uh, 88 and the uh, 20. So I think they're trying to figure out, do we, can we work together and catch back up with that pair in the front here? What do you think of Joey Logano's line leading this race? He's been a lane and a half up from the bottom at least the last 10 laps. Well, I think with this engine package, Mike, you don't have the acceleration. You got 550 horsepower. I, I said it when we were qualifying. You got to let the car have its head. And if you don't, you don't want to turn the wheel any more than you have to. So he's just running a free line and not really putting any wheel in it, trying to get the most speed he can out of his car. Yeah, and I, I just think, I mean, Eric Almarola's car is very good right around the bottom, so he is giving Eric an opportunity, but it's pretty tough to get up alongside that leader, but we're going to see if he keeps opening that door up for Eric Almarola. I think he might take advantage of it. I just think back to qualifying. Remember how Joey went way high into turn three, and we said, wow, that's a different line. Whoa, here comes a four to pit road. And this Kevin is Harvick to gives up a tenth place here. Can't imagine this being a strategy play because this track, it's so fast and that pit road is so slow. I, I would imagine unless he just does a gas, gas and go, he'll lose a lap, Matt. Jeff, two laps ago, Kevin Harvick said he had a loose wheel. He diagnosed it left front. He just told Rodney Childers, I'm coming. We are going to have to go all four. Shane Papala on the front, Daniel Smith in the back. They're already around to the left side. Stan Doolittle. Pump. Car goes up, wheels are on. We'll see where this is going to shake out for the four. And for the lead, Eric Almarola in traffic, trying to best Joey Logano as they work through these rookie drivers. Wow, this battle oh. is definitely not over. Now, Almarola is trapped in with, behind the slower cars. Joey Logano, that experience, that knowledge, he knew exactly what lane to go in and where to go. And now you see Bowman here, he's going to try to go by along with, the, with Jones. So. Almarola really made a bad, he's made another bad, bad decision right there, getting behind that lap car. Garrett Smithley in the 15 this week. And here comes Eric Jones to the inside and Kurt Busch. Oh, we don't have the all right speed these guys do. I can now handle them. I can now corner them. You know, away. That's what I see. Boy, these two almost made contact. It, it, you could tell the 20. I thought Eric Jones maybe was having to lift and the handling was an issue. It's just sheer speed. His car's handling really well. Those guys just have a little more straightaway speed. It just seems like the Fords are a little quicker down the straightaway. Truex has caught that group and behind them, Kyle Larson just made a breakout move, passing four cars to the inside in turn two. 
There he is leading that next back. Yeah, and, and, and Amarola, he, he did what he thought was right. It wasn't like it was a right or a wrong. He just got behind a lap cart and couldn't get out behind him. So it wasn't like he'd done something that he shouldn't have done. He just made it, it didn't work out for him. Well, he made one great move to go to the outside. It was pretty bold and, and, and risky. And he got the lead for a split second. But unfortunately, he came up on those lap cars and then had nowhere to go. Jamie Alex Bowman's got them right where he wants him. Yes, he does. Started this race 20th, worked his way all the way up to second. He's all over Joey Logano. Greg Ives told me they took a different approach here. He actually looked at Alex's notes from the Xfinity Series race last year. The philosophy and the drivability, that's what they were focused on running in the pack. They knew they'd give up speed, and they did in qualifying, but they are exactly where they need to be. Fuel only on the first stop. The car is good. Mike, you know, I, I think I'm right, correct about this. You know, the last time the 88 won at this track, it was Father's Day weekend. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Wow. Top five from five different race teams. That's impressive. Yeah, I talked to a lot of teams that, that qualified mid-pack, and I said, did you go with more downforce and maybe add a little drag and your car's going to race better? And they said, we did, but we didn't expect to qualify that bad. <laughs> yeah. Two laps to go, stage one, pits are closed. And going to be more lappers up ahead for Logano and Bowman. Now, Mike, the 22 car makes this look easy. But let me tell you, you got to have a good handling car to sit out there and lead these guys around the racetrack the way he's doing right now. He's obviously staying in the gas a little bit better than most of them. Now, the first car one lap down right now is Kevin Harvick after that pit stop. Third place, Jones side by side with Al Marola. Kurt Busch looking on. After seeing that crazy battle happen when they caught lap traffic, lap traffic's going to play a big role in this race at some point. A tip of the hat to all those guys there, you know, the 20 and the, and the, uh, and the 10 and the 1. I mean, they're doing a really nice job. The 20 and the 1, here's Kurt Busch hanging right in there. Who is going to win stage one? Alex Bowman, a car link behind Joey Logano through three. This time Logano goes to the bottom in three and four. And by one car length, Joey Logano holds off. Alex Bowman, Eric Jones, Al Marola, Kurt Busch, Martin Truex. And Joey Logano has his sixth stage win of 2019, the most of all NASCAR Cup drivers.
Stage one is completed. Michigan, Alex Bowman, Eric Jones, and Kyle Larson all getting some much needed stage points. While Joey Logano, the stage winner, adds one playoff point to his collection. Tell you what, Mike, that 22 is going to be hard to get out of the lead. If they do good, if they get a good pit stop, got the number one pit stall, he's going to be hard to shake out of that lead. Landon Castle gets the free pass. But I think if you listen to Joe Logano, he said, I got to stay out front, and he's doing he's doing all they can. Pits are open, Jamie. It was a really good stage one for the 88 bunch and Alex Bowman. He said he's just a tad free in, but overall, not bad. They didn't take tires that first stop. There's a tear off for clear view. He'll take four tires here and fuel. No adjustments. Regan. Eric Jones finds his pit stall. There was no fuel or no tires on the first stop for him. This time they're going to try and get even with the competition on tires. The car is too tight in turns one and two, but very good through turns three and four. Four tires, Matt. Joey Logano trying to score his third Michigan win from the pole. He said the car was loose on entry, clean air. Not quite sure what it's going to do in dirty air and air pressure change. Meanwhile, the 10 of Almirola, he was loose the first run, tight the second air pressure adjustment on the 10. Joey Logano wins the race off pit road from Alex Bowman. Everybody with four tires. And Keslowski and Boyer both had big gains on that pit stop. You know, I was so impressed with Eric Jones that first stage to come up through the field like that. What do you say we dial him up? Hey, Eric, Jeff and the guys up in the Fox Sports booth, you got us? Just give him one more try here. Eric Jones, hey, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? What is it about those JGR? <laughs> oh, here we go. Channel 2. Hey, Eric Jones. Trying you again. Hey, <laughs> up in the Fox Sports booth, man. You got me? I got you. There you are. Man, what a run you are having lately. Not not just today, but lately. And uh, that was so impressive. Look, looks like you've got a really good handling race car. Tell us about the speed, what you're seeing around your competitors. You got enough for them? Yeah, I mean, it, it drives really well. The grass and Camry is handling well on both ends. But, uh, you know, just need a tick more speed, I think, to really get up and, and try to lead this thing. So. Uh, try to work on that, get it a little bit better, but been happy here all weekend with my great car. And I think even had uh, Chris a little nervous after practice with how happy I was with it. So it's been good so far. Frightening up, rubbering in, so the track can keep changing, but uh, I think we got a great car for today. All right, looking good. Fun to watch. Appreciate it. <laughs> Made his crew chief nervous. He was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Logano, two time Michigan winner, has won stage one.
Kevin Harvick was going to take the wave around to get back on the lead lap, but he pitted for four tires coming and now is coming down pit road once more. So he will stay one lap down with this stop. Yeah, Mike, I think there must be a concern about that left front tire. They're having an issue they're trying to resolve. Now, Jamie McMurray's been watching the restarts and especially where you can go where nobody is. Yeah, guys, I noticed on that last restart, we've talked about how you want to stay in the rubber here because that's where the grip is. But when they got to turn one on that last restart, Austin Dillon went to no man's land and went all the way to the gray. Look at the momentum that he carries all the way through turns one and two. Um, he passed two or three rows. And what I think you're going to see there is that every spotter and those drivers that were around Austin Dillon put that in the bank. And on this restart, I think you're going to see more guys up there. Hey, Jamie, I, I know that they weren't fully up to speed, but were you a little surprised how much grip there was still up there for Austin Dillon and some of these guys? Oh yeah, I was shocked that, that that I was first off shocked that Austin took the chance so early in the race to make that work. Um, but yeah, I mean, this track is notorious for being dirty and extremely slick when you get up there, but I don't think the cars are up to speed yet. And you know, the most critical part of that is that you can't have a car in front of you when you're doing that, because if you do, you don't have the grip from the track, but you also don't have the air on your car. Thanks, Jamie. Logano and Bowman will be up front for the restart. Matt Tift was too fast entering pit road, so he'll restart at the back of the 30 cars that are on the lead lap, 31 lead lap cars. Here they come to the Geico restart zone for stage two. Pretty good restart for that 88 car. He's holding his own with the 22 right here as they head off turn one, but Jones is going to give Logano a shove that may put him out front. Your help with 19. Here comes your help. Still too wide. Quarterback now inside 88. Boy, Kyle Bush got really wide. I don't know if he's trying to be aggressive on that restart, but he just about got the wall. Joey Logano is giving every impression of being hard to handle today. Bubba Wallace has called for a restart violation. Mike, that 22 car is fast in all the right places. Uh, he's fast down the straightaway. He's handling good through the turns. He just can't get a run on him. How about this 19 car, Martin Trucks Jr.? Going to have to have some help. Oh, not, not coming from his teammate, Eric Jones. Woo! Did you see how close Martin Trucks Jr.? Hey, and look at Boyer. He fought his way back in here after falling way back on the start. Oh, man, he's going to be a little bit upset. He's not going to complete that pass. He was in front of the 19 of Truex until they got to turn three. Now he's going to drop way, way down, try to break the draft to get rid of that side draft. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Yikes! Wow. He door slammed Ryan Blaney. Oh. Sent Blaney to the bottom. And once you get, once you dive inside that guy, you've got to jump back up in front of him because Boyer might get back. Yeah, there he goes to back to the outside of Blaney. Yeah, Blaney didn't do, <laughs> didn't do to Boyer what Boyer did to him. <laughs> Instead of give and take, it's more like take and take. <laughs> That's right. I'll apologize later. Cost without off the two. Cost without off the two. Save and fuel here. The 51 has tagged the wall. Kyle oh, Weatherman. Oh, boy, he sure did. Got a lot of parts flying Taking here. Taking that uh, P40 flying tiger paint scheme. Uh, he's lost his rudder. <laughs> and his uh, horizontal on. stabilizer. It's tethered. <laughs> now, uh, Kevin Harvick has had his issues and a bunch of extra pit stops early in the going here. Matt? Mike, think back to that first four-tire stop when Harvick said he had the vibration. They took the left front off. Excessive wear on that shoulder area was down to the cords. He went back out and he said actually the vibration was worse. They brought him back recently here, checked the lugs on all four. They were tight. Now he says the vibration, which still exists, is not in the left front area. It's a consistent vibration in the car, so they're still chasing it. Well, the good news for Harvick is he's the first car one lap down at the time of caution. He's back on the lead lap, but that's the outside uh, left front tire shoulder there. And Larry, you know, this is something we will typically see when the track is green after heavy rain overnight on that first run. Do you think that's all this is or is there more of an issue there? 
Well, it, that's definitely on the outside of the left front. And what we did notice with Kevin Harvick, he was running the bottom of the racetrack early in the race when the, when the track had no rubber. Let's kind of explain camber with our Fox cutaway car here. And we'll show you a front camber in the front tires because what you do, you put positive camber in the left front. You put negative camber in the right front, which means they're leaning to the inside of the racetrack. That would be the left front right there. And what it wore was that edge right there. NASCAR says you can only run so much camber, but a lot of times, especially Jeff DW and Mike, if the track is green and you have excessive camber, that's when you'll wear that shoulder out. Thanks, Larry. And I don't think the two are related, the vibration that Kevin Harvick's dealing with and that excessive wear on the tire. I think he's got something else going on. Yeah, it sounds like it, Jeff. I think that tire, they thought that was maybe the problem, and now they've changed the tire and they know the lugs are tight some other issue. This fall, a whole new era begins. Fox becomes the new network home of WWE's SmackDown Live every Friday night beginning October 4th, only on Fox. In Michigan, 11 laps complete in stage two of this 400 miler, Joey Logano, 67 of the 71 laps so far, he's been out front and hard to handle. Eric Jones in second, Martin Truex third, both for Toyota, then the Fords of Boyer and Blaney. Alex Bowman is the top Chevy in the race in sixth. If you look at the back of uh, the 22 car of Logano, and you look at the back of the 20 car right behind him, the 22 is much lower in the back, which gives him a lot of speed. The, tw the 20 car looks a little high in the back, which gives him a lot of downforce. You're not talking about huge numbers. We're talking about 100,000 one way or another, but I think that 22 is set up for speed. Whoa. No pit strategy Whoa. going on here. That was close. I mean, they're, I don't know if they're close to their fuel window on making it to the end of this stage. But Jamie, what do you got in the 88? Well, Jeff, the call for the 88, two seconds of fuel. That should get him right to the end of stage number two. Jeff, this definitely gets them to stage, the end of stage number two right here. In, in fact, I go back to Kevin Harvick in that four car. I think with when they pitted with these cautions, he can even make it even though right now he is a lap down. Nine cars did not pit. More of an issue on the 48 now on the 40. right rear for Jimmy Johnson. I think all this is happening on pit road too. Watch that red 12 car. Would you want him right in front of you on the freeway? <laughs> uh, Excuse I'm not me. Sure.
getting ready to go back to green. Now there's a bird's eye view of Michigan International Speedway on what's been a difficult day for Jimmy Johnson. Early on coming out of his pit, he bumped into uh, the 95. Here's Johnson following Michael McDowell down pit road. McDowell slows to enter his pit and whammo. <laughs> Matt Tift is the victim as uh, Johnson makes a sharp right. You think all you need to do is have a spotter on the racetrack, but that spotter's playing an important role for Jimmy Johnson here today. And that right there is bad news. You might get away with a little damage that right front. You damage that right rear. Yeah, that's a that's critical corner. Not going to drive good at all. So once again, Johnson will start at the back of the lead lap. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse had a safety violation on the first caution flag of the day. Uh, it's been a little tough for him or anybody else that's been penalized to rebound here or who's made extra stops. Yeah, I think the cars are so equal, Mike, it's hard to get an advantage on anybody. Now, Kevin Harvick uh, is back on the lead lap. After wave around, there's only three cars one lap down, Smithley, Hauf, and Balicki. Back under green, Joey Logano leads the way. That's Boyer's radio. Thank you. Good move. Boy, Eric Jones might be in a little trouble here if he gets stuck on that bottom lane. They're all lined <laughs> up on the outside. Uh, he's, in, he's in a lot of trouble. That's not going to work out so well for the 20-car Jones. Everybody's going no by. No help. Everybody lined up to the top. Boy, what a nice rebound for Larson in the 42, and he's not done. Going he's going after outside. Boyer. Remember, these two had an issue last week in Pocono and got together. Nice move by Larson. Eric Jones holding his own on the deep inside. Well, that, that helped him out with Larson going to the outside of 14, stalled him out a little bit, and that allowed Eric Jones not to lose more spots than he did. Yeah, he might be able to get up right here in this opening, opening, maybe. Going to force the issue on Bowman. Yeah, he made yeah. it in, but uh, I think Bowman let him in. <laughs> I think he had a crowbar. I think he prized his way in, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> Boy, look Back at Larson working that high line just right there on the edge of the gray and where the rubber's laid into the racetrack. Joey Logano now with teammate Ryan Blaney in tow. Two Fords at the front. Larson Chevy. Well, Kozlowski and Boyer. That's the best news Joey Logano's had all day long because that is his teammate, so he might be a little bit more content with riding in second. I can promise you if Larson or some of those other guys that are back there, like we saw Amarola earlier, now Boyer, they're going to want to go to the lead. Here's uh, Jamie McMurray about our leader. Yeah, guys, I just have been watching Joey Logano. We know how good he is at Daytona and Talladega, and we're watching him kind of manipulate the, his line to make sure he stays in front, gets in the corner. He's trying to take the air off of those cars. And when we're watching the race today, it almost reminds us of kind of a, a small Daytona Talladega where we see the guys getting this single file line and you have to make a decision of, of if you can clear that car when you get to the corner because when someone gets hung out, that's got to be so frustrating for the drivers down these long straightaways to you know see all those cars going to their outside. You know, Jamie, sometimes you just hit everything perfect. I mean, Logano won the pole. He ran a perfect lap qualifying. I think they've got the right balance in the car. He's got enough balance in the car to the rear that it's fast, but he's got enough in it to also make it go through the turns pretty comfortably. So he's in a catbird seat right now. Well, I'm going to be very uh, curious. At some point, you know, Jamie, that at some point he's going to lose that track position. That's when we're going to find out how good Logano truly is. Oh, Jeff and EW, I totally agree. Right now, he's in the perfect position, but if for some reason with strategy or if they have a bad pit stop, if he gets to the back, we'll find out how good of a car he has. The other guy that I've been watching, though, is Kyle Larson, because Kyle Larson is getting up above that black area that you see in the, in the corners, and it's really edgy, and it's a big risk versus reward going up there. He got to the outside of Clint Boyer, and that's the easier pass once you get to the outside of him. But man, is that is that edgy to get step out above that rubber, not knowing how much grip the, uh, the car is going to have. You're right, Jimmy. He likes to ride that wall, and he's getting closer and closer to it every lap. Yeah, Kyle Larson, is uh, he, his risk versus reward is much different <laughs> than, <laughs> I, I agree. than the rest of the field out there today. I agree. Now, since the restart, Kevin Harvick is the biggest mover, plus eight. Bubba Wallace 
uh, is up six spots. And Kurt Busch is up three. Let's get down to our leaders pit, Matt. Mike, great observation by Jimmy McMurray and Jeff Gordon just about what they're seeing in DW. You touched on it as well. It seems like the action is happening more down in one and two. TJ Majors told Joey under that last caution that it seems like one and two is much more sen sensitive. We've been in the clean air, but if we get in dirty air, that could be where we have issues. Yeah, TJ Majors. Of all the spotters on the top of the stand, I've heard J Dale Jr. say this. I think Joey feels the same way. T.J. Major is one of the best spotters that you can have up there calling a race like this. And, and I think Joey and, and Todd Gordon, they communicate so well, Mike. There's such trust there that when Joey tells Todd something, Todd listens and vice versa. I really think they've got it. They've got the right combination. Harvick keeps coming. He's now up 10 since the restart. He has an incredibly fast race Holy car. I've been watching him, and he's just picking them off one by one. He can go outside to the middle, to the inside. And then if, if you're going to have a problem, have it early like they did, get it resolved, and then you can go back to race and get yourself back up to the front. I don't know what they were doing in and out of the pits, but they're working on that car, and I think they must have fixed it. Martin Truex back in 10th place. Regan. Well, they pitted on that last stop for fuel only, Mike, and the plan was to basically make sure they could make it to the end. Uh, Cole Pern, Crucci said, I would rather have our car in 10th place with enough fuel than third place and question it. These guys are working off of two numbers, much like we would at a super speedway. If they are out front and in clean air, they're working off a number of laps that they think they can make it that is different than the number of laps if they are drafting by about four laps today. Is it only coincidence that Cole Pern's pit is right next to the Canadian flag? <laughs> uh, it's got to be. It's got to be a coincidence. Boy, Larson, that time goes to the inside, but not able to make it stick. Well, we know Kyle Larson loves this racetrack. He won both. He's won California two-mile track. He's won here on the two-mile track. He really thrives on a track like this. Kevin Harvick for 12th against William Byron. Look at that car just roll around the bottom. No drafting help or, or any other partners needed to help him complete that pass of William Byron and bring it along the 18 of Kyle Busch. Twenty five of 60 laps in stage two complete Joey Logano still out front.
89 laps complete. Kyle Larson Chevrolet drew a beat on Ryan Blaney for second place. And completed the pass. They'd been working on the 12 of Blaney. First, he tried the outside several times, couldn't make that stick. The two of Keslowski actually got to the inside of Larson a couple of times. I think he said, all right, I might have to do this on the bottom of the racetrack. And then he made that stick. So obviously, a really good race car for Kyle Larson today and some fun moves. I, I think there's guys like Larson that can really worry Logano to death. I just don't think they can pass him. Well, we're talking about fuel mileage. Some of those teams that came down pit road topped off. Some of this not getting good fuel mileage, and that is our leader right now, Joey Logano, out there up front. Halfway through stage number two, side by side for fifth. You know what goes well with pasta on a Monday night? Ooh, <laughs> I know. A Monday night NASCAR, crank, crank it, it up. up. I mean, it just like Jeff does. That's not true. In line. They're just turning earlier than us on the exit. There. Have any help out back from the start finish line on three back? Thing. Little gain on the two back to one and a half here. He went to the line this time, the three and four, two on the line. Come back up behind you here, right here in your track, two back. He's still clear by three. One up to the 88, half up to the 88. Maybe you will help us. Clear. Outside corner, bumper clear. There you go, two wide behind still with you. With you tight, four working in 88, clear with two back. Three. Three. three is three back over the run. We watch your rear out of three. Get up. Two back in my three. Four back half with you. Inside now. You've got trailers with him. 18 with you. Three only inside. Clear high. Clear by one of the 88. So just in there. 19 with you. You're clear. trying to fight his way into the top five against Clint Boyer and you saw damage on the back of the 88 of Alex Bowman that came from his teammate Chase Elliott. Well we just trying to get down underneath of him and clipped him in the left rear. Boy it just peeled that left rear corner of the bumper. Jamie. And Alex wasn't really sure if there was contact and he asked Greg Ives his crew chief did Chase get into me they said yes he said I am sideways my car is so free they said it's really flared out hang on to it and they also told him he's in a good spot to make it to the end so to hold on to that car so they can get some stage points. Yeah just a slight misjudgment as the nine of Chase Elliott went to go to the inside you, we've seen where these runs and where you get position on their quarter panel how that helps you complete the pass Whoa. as we see Boyer have a big issue through one and two. Boy, he lost a lot of momentum there as he had to check up. Eric Jones to the inside. And let's get back up front to our leader and Matt. Mike, impressive work by TJ Majors, Joey Logano, spotter. Great observation about the 42 of Larson. 
He says that he gets a great run off turn four. That's where he may have a great chance to try to set you up going down into one. But where Larson loses it in the center of one and two to off, that's where you start to stretch it out a little bit. Just trying to give him different pieces of information so he can pull the defense. And guys, let's talk about these drivers that did not pit under that last caution. You see right there, 23 laps to go in this stage. Now, drivers pretty much like Kevin Harvick, Alex Bowman, Martin Trex Jr. pitted that last caution. We feel comfortable they can make it. But when you look at, it, at our top seven right now, which includes that leader, Joey Logano, on that 22, they pitted with 57 to go, which is about five or six laps outside the fuel window. But we have had 10 caution laps since they pitted, but they're going to be right there on the threshold, I think. So enough fuel, enough fuel or fuelish? We'll see. Coca-Cola family of drivers faring pretty well today. Joey Logano's already clinched the bonus for leading the most laps. That's an extra six pack of product. Kyle Larson currently second, Austin Dillon ninth, Daniel Suarez, Denny Hamlin, Bubba Wallace, and Ryan Newman all on the lead lap. And Kyle Larson, Regan, is he sitting biding his time, trying to figure out his next move? What? Well, Kyle Larson has already been told by crew chief Chris Johnson that he cannot make it to the end of this stage. They know they're going to have to pit, so they told him, go as hard as you can right here. Get as much track position as you can. We're going to have to make a green flag stop. The 20 car of Eric Jones in the same boat. They want him to stay with that lead pack that he's with right now. So when they do pit, he doesn't lose a lap, but they're going to have to stop for fuel as well. As Larry pointed out, the top seven drivers are a little questionable on fuel. Here's Chase Elliott's radio. If you get in a good spot here, just say what fuel you can. Save fuel. Copy. Do what I can do for you. Mike, yeah. that's, that's the theme of every week. Every week is like <laughs> save fuel. Jamie? And after that, it was about two laps ago. 
They told Chase, we need you to go about 75% throttle all the way around to make it to the end here. Mm. Yeah, and, and they're not going to, I mean, they'll run out, but they'll run out with a, a lap of reserve so they can still get to pit road to get that fuel. But I just don't know how much fuel you can really save if they're a lap or two behind. Jamie, what do you think? Man, guys, I just think with the drag that the cars have in them this year, it's going to be really hard to save fuel and still run a decent lap time because that's the balance you have, right, is is trying to save fuel but still maintain a somewhat decent lap time. And, and uh, to do the tricks of, you know, driving it down the straightaway, pushing the clutch in, shutting the engine off, I just think you'll lose so much lap time that you it's it's almost as, as you know, well off to, to pit. So much different this year than uh, than what we've had in the past. Jamie, I think you're right because the cars are running so much closer together this year. You don't have any gaps. Uh, you're just much pretty much right on top of each other. The first 15, 20 cars. Yeah, I mean, the only way that works, I think, is if you get everybody having to save fuel if the whole field's in the same position. But the fact that just those first seven are going to have to save fuel, I mean, to me, like, Kevin Harvick's kind of in the best position right now. And, you know, 30 minutes ago, we thought he was in, in trouble and <laughs> might not finish this thing. But um, clearly those guys have, have put themselves in a good position, and, and uh, he's not going to have to save here. Let's check with Matt. The Fords out front of Joey Logano is impressive, but what impresses me right now is Kevin Harvick, how he's making his way back up through. Remember, he topped off for fuel just like the car in front of him. The three of Austin Dillon, Rodney Childress told him, just take care of it. Pretty much everybody in front of you except for Dillon is going to have to stop. Matthew Benedetto just going a lap down. Larry could, could even the leader, Joey Logano, stop for a splash and go without losing a lap here under green. Mike, pit road is so long here, and having to maintain pit road speed of 55 miles per hour and then slowing down getting on the pit road and getting back up to speed, it, it, it's very, very borderline. And I go back to what Regan Smith talked about. The leader is going to use more fuel than those guys that are drafting off behind him. So he's really the one that's not in good shape, Joy Logano. So even with that two and a half second gap back to the eighth place car, Nobody is safe stopping for fuel under green. Nine laps to go in stage two, and once again, the top seven drivers are running very low on fuel. Yep, eight to go. I don't know, Mike. Not much activity on pit road. 
Well, we're wondering if any of these cars are trying to save fuel. You can see right there, Brad Keselowski got a big run on his teammate Ryan Blaney. He's actually going to try to go for the pass. So that already tells you he's probably not trying to save fuel. A little contact. But I, I don't think any of these guys up front here are trying to save any fuel. So they're either confident they can make it or they're confident they're going to definitely be coming down pit road. Uh, Kyle Larson peels off from second place to make a stop. Mike, it's so hard to do. You're running 190 mile an hour. You got to slow that thing down to 55. Plus, Darrell, he doesn't have a win in the bank. He can't afford to gamble like Joey Logano can or Brad Keselowski can. Regan. Kyle Larson has to his pit stall right now. As we said, they're going to have to get that fuel. This race car has been tight in turns one and two. Turns three and four have been pretty easy for them, though, with the headwind that they're dealing with. Well, Larson could have used some stage points, but they take the time to take tires. And we'll see if he can stay on the lead lap. Joey Logano yeah, here is he coming. Comes. Here he comes. No stage win for him. Larson took two tires and fuel. Let's see what these guys end up doing. It looks like he might stay on the lead lap. Kyle Larson coming off pit road. Jamie. And Brad Kozlowski said after that last wedge adjustment, this car was much better. A little bit tight there. Fuel and right side. Regan. Eric Jones, Eric Jones finds his pit stall. This car is tighter in traffic with the sun out right now. Matt. Paul is for left side tires for Joey Logano. Chris Conklin nods that the car is full of fuel and he's away. Ryan Blaney, the leader, he will come to pit road. And that will leave just Chase Elliott and Clint Boyer. Who need a stop. They've asked Elliott to save, but can he save enough? Safety violation, Brad Keselowski. He'll have to do a pass through penalty. Oh, is it run tire maybe and the, uh, the gun? It's a hurry up deal and you got to slow down and go faster sometime. And Elliott's coming. He will give up the lead to Clint Boyer. And this may all cycle around to Austin Dillon's advantage. Jamie. Chase Elliott, as I mentioned, was running 75% throttle for quite some time, but it just wasn't enough. Right sides and enough fuel here to get to the end. So Boyer, last man standing, who last pitted at lap 63. Austin Dillon was in the pits lap 72. As was Kevin Harvick at 73. Here comes Boyer. Yep. And uh, I tell you, isn't it funny? Harvick was in trouble. Lap down. Takes a wave around. Comes back in the pits. Here he is. I think he's probably got the car that will win this stage. Austin Dillon looking for his first ever stage win. His younger brother Ty got his first a few weeks ago. There's another guy, really, that three car one's really good on these two mile racetracks. Ran really set on Poet, California, and uh, he's had some pretty good runs on these two mile tracks. Matt. Coleman Dallahide runs around and gets that right rear. Look for only right sides for Boyer here on the stop. They get the tires back, and he's away. Hey, Larry, I'm only seeing these guys. I know we're, they're taking two tires, but they're only putting one can of fuel in it. You think they're just going to run that thing until it goes dry again, or will they have to come back down pit road during this stage break? Well, remember, in that next stage, the final stage, everybody has to pit. So possibly what they may do, Jeff, is they may come and just and, and do a minimal stop at the end of this stage, or they may possibly stay out for track position, knowing no matter what, you have to stop in that next stage. Martin Truex has closed right up on the two leaders, and Kurt Busch is coming. This is going to be a one-lap shootout for the stage two win. Okay, the Dylan kid, Austin, he's hanging on that lead. Well, I want to give it up. Well, these are huge points for somebody like Austin Dillon. I mean, you, you got a team trying to make it to the playoffs, but Kevin Harvick, he wants that playoff point that can add up be so valuable for him later in this playoff and, and for the championship. And these two guys are such great friends. I mean, you know, they, they hardly ever have had a conflict or, a, <laughs> uh, or, or, or didn't, didn't agree about, each, about things on the track. And neither has a race win this year, but here they come off turn number four. 
And Austin Dillon. Down to the inside by two car lengths. Is your stage two winner from Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex, Kurt Busch, and Eric Almarola. That's uh, Richard Childress, just back from a trip to China, uh, overseeing RCR, grandson Austin Dillon, and Daniel Hemrick, his cup drivers. Pop Pop's going to be happy. I should say. First stage win for Austin Dillon. Carrying our uh, Fox Visor cam for the first time. Doing everything he can to save fuel, just to make sure he gets on pit road to fill it up, put tires on. Saving a little fuel there. The final stage point went to uh, Chris Busher in 10th place behind Hemrick, Byron, and Bowman. Bush has been doing a great job collecting points lately. He might sneak up on some folks if uh, they're not yep. careful. Good man. Scrappy would be proud of him. So the pitch should open this time. Ricky Stenhouse is already there. Uh, he's been there quite some time, getting a little, and now pulls away after service complete. So he will start at the back for having pitted too soon. What a beautiful day. We're partly cloudy now, mostly sunny skies. Here in Cambridge Junction, Michigan. And here they come down pit road. Regan. Well, Martin Truex Jr. with a nice call from crew chief Cole Pern to go ahead and get that fuel so that they could get some stage points and get their car back towards the front right here. He's free into turn one, but he needs to be a little bit looser off of the corner. They're scared to make too much of an adjustment because of that right now. The one car, Kurt Busch, on the right side of your screen, he is too tight off of turn two. The last pit stop, they came down and worked on that right rear to make sure it was clear. Matt. 
Kevin Harvick is already in. They're going to go four tires on the four. The car was losing its nose. Meanwhile, the three of Austin Dillon, he's already away. He was tight down in one and two. Meanwhile, Logano and Boyer came back in to get more fuel and get the tires on the side of the car they didn't put on the last time. And look at the difference. Two tire changes. Big jumps in position after those stops. Uh, I believe Brad Keselowski stayed out. Remember, he's a lap down for having to serve that penalty and will likely take the wave around. We say we dial up to three. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Hey, Austin Dillon, it's a DW, buddy. Uh, congratulations on the win in that stage, and thank you for wearing that helmet, Kim. And how's your car, pal? We've, uh, we've got a pretty good Dow Chevrolet today. I'm really proud of uh, the guys who made some big adjustments in practice from first to second practice. And Man, the golden rule, uh, you got to pit when you can make it on fuel, and it worked out right there. Yes, it did. I know you made Pop Pop mighty happy. I saw him strutting around there just a minute ago. So congratulations. Keep it up, pal. Thanks, buddy. Austin Dillon, our Simbacourt onboard camera, and a penalty for Eric Almarola driving through too many pit boxes on exit. We'll send him to the back of the line. Yes, thank you. No, 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 it's all good. Tiger Woods returns to Pebble Beach, side of his most dominant major win. Brooks Kepka looks to make history. It's the U.S. Open 
beginning Thursday on Fox FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Can't wait to get out west in a couple weeks right after that U.S. Open and be out in Sonoma, just, Sonoma. Uh, just up the coast from there. Wine country. Uh, Brad Keselowski will not get the wave around because he chose to make a pit stop. And let's show a replay of his penalty. It's termed a safety violation. Yeah, I think I'd call this too many men over the wall. I'd call just they off. roll that tire to him, and he casually yeah. goes to reach it, and then he goes, he realizes he's lost control of it, Leans over the wall. Once you put that hand down on the wall, that's a violation. That tire bounced when it hit the wall and bounced. He wasn't ready for that, and then he had to reach in there and try to grab it, and it's, I guess that's a safety violation. And NASCAR reviewed the procedure on Eric Almarola, and they have taken back the penalty for driving through too many boxes on exit, so Almarola will restart 11th. 74 laps to go. Let's look at the Xfinity fastest pit stops on this stage break. Chase Elliott, Joey Logano, Eric Jones. So now everybody in the same box having pitted at lap 123 or shortly thereafter in the case of Bubba Wallace and Corey LaJoy and we're going to restart with 31 lead lap cars in the same box on fuel Mike but not on tires some of these guys did take four tires and I just wonder like Kevin Harvick who's one of those that took four later when they come down pit road if this thing stays green they can only do, they, they can maybe choose to only do two or even under caution yeah I think that four car could be a car that could pass the 22. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. Joey Logano's led 109 laps today. He and Chase Elliott on the front row. Green. You in the 20. Oh, here goes the four to the outside, just like you called it, yep. DW. Going to go three wide. I think three this. Wide here. Wow. <laughs> This is something Joey Logano has not experienced. Unfamiliar territory yeah, for him to be stuck in the middle, going backwards three wide. You see his car dancing around. I mean, that car needs to be out front. And right now, he's in the, he's the rock between two hard places. And here comes another Eric Almirola to his outside. Still three wide. Woo. Wow. Jumps up in front of William Byron. Whoa, what a move. That was incredible, Mike, that he was able to get that 22 car in that hole. Every track we've been to this month, the restarts have been just wild. Kevin Harvick had a couple of unscheduled pit stops early, got things sorted out, and now has gone to the front. And, yeah. and you know, a lot of these guys thought two tires are going to be the way to go for track position, but our top three right now, the night, oh, oh, Larson. No. Larson and, and Logano, they really had contact. Look at William Byron scoot through. How did he save that? That's all at, what, 180, 90 miles per hour. That's some quick hands, buddy. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know how he did that. Tony, th these two tires, it's catching up on some of these guys. That's what I was going to say. Those guys up front are trouble. Trouble, turn two. Trouble. Boy, you're in the fence. Boy, this keeps on hitting. The hits just keep on coming. Wow. That'll put us under caution for the fifth time today. Boyer was 10th. Let's first go back uh, to the big save by Kyle Larson when he and Joey Logano got together. And then we'll see what brought out the caution. Yeah, we're coming off the corner and turn four here. Oh, he just tries to jump up. That almost similar to the what he did last week with Boyer jumping up in front of yep. him. This time he squeaks through and saves it and did and did not touch the wall that car was up to it but didn't touch it now let's see what happened to clint boyer up in turn two see he goes to the inside of eric jones maybe oh man they, oh, just they made contact a tiny yeah. bit yeah he contact. got into the left rear of the 20 and that turn that got him loose gosh he was lucky and, right and there in, oh boy real close there and he kind of got himself in a situation where as he went to the inside of the 20, all of a sudden he became three wide. 
because I believe that's the three of Austin Dillon. And it's almost like that car, maybe somebody said inside and he had to move up the racetrack a little bit. Yeah, Jones did a really nice job. Of, Eric Jones did a great job of holding on to his car, but it just freed up the 14 so much he couldn't save it. And so did Chris Busher, who was right behind Boyer when that car went up and into the into the wall. That's two hard hits. So the 14 took right here. He backs it right back into the wall. Whoa. Bam. Ty Dillon just squeaked through there. Fifth uh, that, caution flag of the day. That's kilt. Right along with the visor cam on board Austin Dillon as we went to caution for this. Why do I hear my voice? Welcome back to the Race Hub Studios. Fifth caution out at Michigan. You know, Joey Logano has been the class of the field the entire race. We saw on that restart, just got hung out to dry. Now we're going to get to see what Kevin Harvick has. Yeah, Kevin Harvick uh, made it three wide, went to his outside, which is the preferred groove. Um, and now he's back in sixth. Uh, Joey Logano's back in sixth. So it's going to be interesting to see what his car does in traffic and if he can get back to the front. But we think Kevin Harvick's the best car, and we know Joey Logano has a great car. So it's going to be fun if we can watch those guys duel it out. How does that car react now that it's back in traffic? traffic when we know that it likes to be up front. Well, I mean, obviously it's not going to have the grip, 
Um, and Joey Logano has done such a good job throughout the whole race of putting his car where it needs to be, where guys can't get by him. Um, but we're going to find out, Shannon, what the car does because he's going to be telling his crew chief here real soon. So I was listening in on Kevin Harvick's radio when he had those pit problems. So calm, did not overreact, did not get upset. Rodney Childers said at one point, guys, we got to get our stuff together. But how key is that in making the rebound, the fact that you stay calm in those situations? Well, I mean, that's huge. And we've heard Kevin Harvick uh, voice his frustrations at times. And I would have thought now that it's the second or third week in a row that it's happened that he would get frustrated but uh, but he's done a great job of keeping us cool and now he's leading the race and he's got the best car today so it'd be it'd be uh, fun to see him and and Delgano kind of battle this out here oh my goodness we're gonna see what Kevin Harvick has in that four car right now looking for that first win of the season Mike your last year Brad Keselowski got the free pass he's back on the lead lap of the top five drivers on this restart only one Martin Truex has been to Victory Lane this year. Well, and Mike, some others that have gone to Victory Lane multiple times, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, deep in the field right now. I like that outside line, though, the way it's lined up, though. You got Truex, Larson, and Logano in that outside lane. That could be big on this restart. Kevin Harvick, front row outside. Now he's got it. Looking his rear view mirror for Larson to take him three wide down through one and two. At 42 and 22, it's like they're magnetized together. <laughs> yeah, and the nine's a part of that uh, train as well. That's a tight group right there. Whoa, what, what the heck? I, I don't know. I think they're working together. No. Oh, boy, Logano payback to Larson pushes him by the four car. Uh-oh. Oh, oh and hang Austin on, hang Dillon's on. in the wall. Oh, dead gum. Caution. I can't, that was crazy. That was a crazy turn right there, guys. Same spot. We'll be okay here. We're both okay. We'll get caught up here. We'll work on it. Same spot as Clint Boyer. Yeah. And, and, and kind of in the same position. Boyer was in 10th. Austin Dill was in 12th. I don't think there's a lot of air that's moving around these race cars that that, that um, you know, part of the, the pack. I just think when you got to get out of the throttle, it just creates these bottlenecks. Look at this huge run from a big push. Logano oh. to push the 42 Larson by. I think Larson is a little free when he got out front, and then Logano side drafts get to his to his left rear. Does the field kind of accordion up by the time it gets back here to the three? I do, no. but I don't think that really had anything to do here. Okay. We see the three's already high, having to get out of the throttle. Ooh. Oh, it looks like he and he William might have got Byron. A little, a little help. <laughs> yeah, it looked like William Byron's car started to get away from him as the three went up the racetrack, and then they made contact. I don't think there's a lot of damage to that three car, but he's definitely going to have to come to the pits. Oh, I see Austin Dillon takes these guys three wide. Nice move by him going into turn one. Yeah, you, you can hear he already started losing grip, getting out of the throttle. Damn. And then once they made contact, it was all over from there. He was just along for the ride. There was a whole lot of steering going on. There was, but, you know, Danny Stockman said, let's don't panic. Let's get in here and work on it. Oh, he's, can pretty see, loose there. he's loose. Yeah, the three's loose getting in. And now the 24 gets a little loose, just trying to correct it. I think what happened, Jeff, the three had to lift a little bit because he was loose, and that allowed William Byron to get up there and just maybe tap him in the left rear a tiny bit. That's all it took. Well, it doesn't take much, but uh, that's pretty heavy damage to the, on the right rear for Austin Dillon. Obviously frustrated. Yeah. Well, he may fare better than Clint Boyer. His car gets back out on track. And there are a few takers on pit road during this caution flag.
Cleaning up from the sixth caution of the day, Garrett Smithley will get the free pass on this one. Joey Logano, your race leader. Time to take a look at today's Credit One Bank Ones to Watch. Martin Truex Jr. has won every other race over the last six. Last week he finished 35th with the blown engine, so you know what that means. I think to today he gets his first Michigan victory. Yeah, Jeff, Joey Logano has been stuck in 22 wins since his win at Vegas back earlier in the year. He got his first win for Team Penske at Michigan in 2013. He's going to be win number 23 when it's all said and done today. Now, I love it when you have trouble early, overcome it, and find yourself back in the lead. Kevin Harvick was second in this race last year. He won here in June. Guess what? Kevin Harvey goes to victory circle today. Chase Elliott comes to his best track average finish here is fifth. They had some damage with the teammate. They got it fixed. They had the fastest pit stop of them all. Last go around, Chase Elliott's running up front. I think it's the nine who gets his second win of the season. Well, I'm going to ride the same horse uh, here since Friday. Eric Almarola started outside pole. He had the best long run speed in final practice of anybody. A car that's fast, a car that handles really well, ought to be able to find its way to the front, right? And that's your Credit One Bank ones to watch. All right, let's check with Jamie. Clint Boyer has been checked and released. It looks like the same thing just happened to the three car, but what did you see happen? Yeah, the 20 got loose getting into the corner, and I tried to move down to not hit him, and it was just kind of an invasive move to, to not run into him, and I got loose through with the three underneath of me. It's just a situational deal, and and you know, I mean, if you run out of real estate, it's just <laughs> kind of par for the frustrating course out there. Um, you know, it's missed out on stage points again. Just kind of, it's like however the cookie falls, crumbles is how you get the stage points. If the caution comes in your favor, you make the right decision at the right time, you get track position and get points. If you don't, you don't. And hopefully the luck plays out. It's really, really frustrating day. Um, you know, obviously, Everybody at Sir Ross Racing's racing with heavy hearts, uh, missing, you know, losing a, a teammate with Sean Souls this, this week was was a big blow to everybody at Sir Ross Racing and this racing community. I mean, that guy's been around a long time, come back to the w, MWR days with me and uh, made a big difference in my career. So, um, you know, I was hoping to have a lot better finish than that. I can promise you I left here a lot happier last year, but, um, yeah, I just, I guess it wasn't our day. Thanks, Clint. Mike? Clint Boyer was last year's winner here at Michigan in June. Uh, they waved off the restart. We're going to try one to go again as uh, NASCAR had to recycle one of the caution lights around the track. Austin Dillon back down pit road yet again for repairs. Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. Sorry, guys. Just stayed with it. I just back here. Come now, I got a flat. Come now, come now. Well, he won a stage and had a good race car, and it's frustrating when you get in trouble like that. They uh, debuted that paint scheme on D Day at RCR in front of a huge uh, group of veterans, some of them from World War II. A lot of names on the hood. Very, uh, very patriotic tribute there on Austin Dillon's car. Yeah, Mike, we're getting ready for these restarts, and it, it seems like to me the outside lane has the advantage. Uh, they get a nice run down into turn three. A lot of it depends on who's behind you. Right now you got to the four and the 22 on the front row, but they got good pushers behind both of them. Uh, Jamie McMurray, you ran this race last year. What's the issue with restarting on the inside? Well, the inside, when you get to turn one, it's a little flatter, lower on the track, and the car on the outside, you know, hugs down on your quarter panel. 
Uh, but to me, the biggest thing is I want to be in the outside lane because Kyle Larson behind Joey Logano right here, he has no choice but to push Joey Logano down in turn one. Chase Elliott behind Kevin Harvick, he might pull out and make it three wide, and when Harvick loses his momentum, it, uh, you can take till turn three to get it going again. Yeah, right. That's a great point, Jamie. A lot easier to block and make that guy push you from behind in that outside lane. Let's see how it plays out. Logano gets a big jump. It's kind of going to be a drag race, but just to Jamie's point, there's Kurt Busch jumping to the inside of Chase Elliott, going to make it three wide. Heck, they might have been four wide. Oh, big stack up there, four wide. This is where the outside lane kind of takes advantage if it has one. It's coming off the corner. Got a little momentum. I don't know if that's going to work for the 22 or not because the four is right there. Well, I'll tell you, somebody took advantage was Ryan Newman as he's coming all the way up into the top five. Great move there. Newman in the six and Kurt Busch in the one. Boy, that four car, man, he drove that thing off into turn three, and he got the lead away from the 22. That four is bad fast, guys. Boy, Kurt Busch might come to help his teammate Larson. Larson was about to lose a bunch of spots down that inside lane. Something broke on Eric Jones' car between turns three and four, and he made it, got squeezed all the way back out through the pack and comes to pit road. Oh, it looks like it might be a right front tire. I can't yeah, tell Yeah, it does for look sure. low. That right front looks low. Boy, he was running wide ten. down the back straight. We look at Bowman giving Suarez a huge push into turn three. And look at Suarez go. Man, right by the 42 of Larson and up on the back bumper of, of Ryan Newman. Nice move. Man, when you get a run, you can run it <laughs> for a long way. <laughs> you can sail it <laughs> off in there. Chase Elliott now alone on the inside lane. He's not done yet. He goes Suarez to the inside of Newman into turn one. Wow. And he's going to make that stick. Suarez has got a car that really gets off in the corner fast. Carries a lot of speed down into turns one and three. Newman doing a nice job of hanging tough, though, in the six car. I think right now Kyle Larson's got a bit of an advantage because he has a teammate that's on his rear bumper. If he pulls out, if he makes uh, a move and he has the momentum, if Kurt Busch can stay with him, that's going to help secure that pass. Yeah, it's hard once they get single foul like this, Jeff, it's so hard to make a pass by yourself. You need some help, and having a teammate is certainly good help to have behind you. Well, we've got the best two cars, I think, that have been here all weekend long. Right now, one, two. Kevin Harvick in that number four in the lead, and Joey Logano in second. We're going to find out whether you can pass that leader or not. Yeah, well, Rodney Childers, the crew chief on the four car, he's got to have a sigh of relief to get that car back out front. Look at that. One I mean, he was a lap down, down at one time, and it, we thought he was in trouble. Now the, now the field's in trouble. That was a graph of your heart rate. That would scare you. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, Logano is looking underneath him down here in turn two. And I think these are the first two leaders to be able to gap the field. And both of these guys, maybe Kevin Harvick even more extreme. Look at the back of their cars, how squatted down the back. They've got that spoiler out of the air. They're going for that straight line speed. But whatever they've been able to do to the setup of this car, they've had cars that handle really well in the corners also. Michael McDowell made an unscheduled stop, heads back out on the track. In 15th, Bubba Wallace, yesterday's uh, football star with Corey LaJoy. Brad Keselowski back on the lead lap, running 18th in the two. Paul Menard was strong early on. Jimmy Johnson had trouble early on. They're all right in one pack. And right behind him, a big run coming from the two of Brad Keselowski back on the lead lap. Jimmy Johnson had a fairly eventful, eventful day yes. on pit road, I must say. Kurt Busch passes Kyle Larson, his Ganassi teammate for fifth. And up he, front, here goes Logano. He does, and he's Boy, able he, to make that pass. I don't know if Kevin's going to give it up Ooh. that easy. Nope. He was almost clear. Yep. But that's that's goes to show you how much speed that 22 car has of Logano to be able to even get to the inside of the four. With no help on the inside, Logano blasts back into the lead. And here comes Kurt Busch. Look at this huge run by Kurt. When you can run into that third turn, and turn one or three, either one, and you don't have to get out of the gas, man, do you have a lot of momentum. Next weekend, 
Kurt is going with his team owner Chip Ganassi to Le Mans to check out the stock uh, sports car scene. Oh, he no, is open we're just to, oh. talking about Bubba Wallace having a top 15 run. Yeah, you got a break pedal. Well, these two guys right here, have, these two guys I think are having fun, but I'm not sure. I, I just don't think that the position Kevin Harvick's in, he's going to complete this pass into turn three, not with Logano right on his door. Ooh, man, you saw that four car get a little loose. Saw those hands busy inside that four car. He might get a little help there from Kurt Busch. Yes, down the front straightaway. Wow. Wants to push a new, wants to push a new. Can't quite get to you. Still there, right rear. Wants to do one shot for you. Pops covered here, 22 outside. Wants to push. And as soon as Bush went to the top, Logano squirted away. Kevin better get up into that hole real quick ooh, between ooh, him and the ooh, 19. Ooh, or, he made it. Yeah. That was close, getting a four in front of the 19 like that, but he made it. Let's go back and uh, look at what happened to Bubba Wallace. The front of that group on the right. Oh, Trouble yeah. down. The, the leader there, or uh, Kevin Harvick in the four, drove in the corner so hard the car took off up the track. I thought he was going to hit the wall, but he caught it. He caught it, but he's back to seventh place. Well, obviously, you can see something broke in that 43 right as he turned down into turn yep. one. There's a lot of there's a lot of slicing and dicing going on here right now. Harvick trying to rebound now against teammate Suarez for fifth place. Well, Suarez, he treated his teammate pretty kind right there. He yeah. could have slid up in front of Kevin Harvick, chose not to. And then how about Chris Busher? <laughs> he got some some stage points. Yeah. Now look at him up in what sixth, seventh spot. Yeah, he's seventh right now, doing a nice job. Outstanding run. Bowman, he's eighth. Ryan Newman continues to hang into the top 10. Well, let's see if Kurt Busch is in position to do anything with Joey Logano. The only guy he have tried. The only guy that's been able to pass that twin do is Kevin Harvick. Pretty much everybody else has been stuck behind him. Yeah, but you know, I think to our super speedway races at Daytona and Talladega, and I look at these guys like Logano and Kurt Busch, both of them very good at those types of racetracks, and I'm just wondering if these guys aren't starting to learn how to race with this setup, or maybe you have to back up to that car behind you to get a big push to make that pass. You know when you find out how good you are? When you say there's 50 laps to go, or you, you better get on it. <laughs> We're going to take you double wide.
44 laps to go. Toyota top performers, Martin Truex second, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, and Matt DiBenedetto on the lead lap. Here's why Chase Elliott had to come to pit road. Yeah, just Ooh, it's a yeah. little bit wide. Looks like quite a bit of damage. That was Daniel Hamrick. Somebody slid up in front of him, took the air off of him. Now, what happens to Kurt Busch here? As Kevin Harvick comes steaming around the outside. <laughs> Whoa, That's what, yeah. <laughs> it just sucked him up yeah. the racetrack, and they both had to check up. Yeah, the four cars, what happened to the one car? Got him <laughs> on the outside, and I think got him a little bit loose. But you know what? I watch this. You see right here. Woo. I, I watch this, and as it's all unfolding, Mike, it reminds me of what Tony Stewart said. This is a chess match, and I'm only smart enough to play checkers. <laughs> <laughs> Man, here's a guy we have not talked about hardly at all today, and that's Kyle Busch. He has been struggling, but he's finally starting to make his way up there. Just got into the top 10. Hasn't spent much time, if any, in the top 10 today. You just can't ever count he and that team out. <laughs> nope. Never. No, sir. I mean, not they're, him. they're just too good. Larry, what do you think is going on with Kyle Busch? Well, before we get to Kyle Busch, Mike, let's talk about our leaders because they pitted at lap 123. Should we stay green, they're going to have to pit somewhere around 25 or 30 to go. But Kyle Busch, Adam Stevens brought him to pit road on that caution before the last one. So he pitted at 131, so he can go about another 20 to 25 laps, which would put him somewhere around 20 to go. They have made a ton of pit stops, Mike, with that 18 car. We watched them actually pull a Packer out of the right front. Major adjustments all day long on that car. Well, it's working, Larry. He just ran his personal fastest lap of the race three laps ago. How about this awesome move by the one car of Kurt Busch? He sees these two get side by side, Suarez and Larson. He doesn't go to three <laughs> wide because Suarez went down the bottom to block it. He just goes straight up the middle, goes by both of them. This track has been his playground today. And I'll bet if you laid a track over all of his laps today, he's touched every square inch of asphalt. <laughs> Top, bottom, inside, outside. Brad Keselowski against Ryan Newman for 12th, and here is Larson and Busher for sixth. Well, Joey Logano has been tough to pass. 129 laps, he's been out front. Now, Jamie Mack with 40 laps to go. Who's got anything for him, and how are they going to get it done? Well, guys, as I'm watching that, Joey Logano's driving his car, but TJ Majors is as well. And he's telling him where Martin and Harvick are running. And I think the only way you're going to pass Joey Logano is if you can get to his outside like we saw Kurt Busch or uh, Kevin Harvick do to Kurt Busch earlier. It's so hard to complete that pass on the inside. But if you can get Joey to run a little lower and sneak to his right rear quarter, I think that's the only way Martin or Kevin are going to be able to get by him. The only time that I saw Joey low on the racetrack was on the last lap of that stage he won. I, Otherwise, he's been kind of in the middle. Yeah, I just feel like Joey's doing an outstanding job as a driver. TJ Major's doing an outstanding job as a spotter. I think they got this thing figured out, Mike, and uh, I think he's going to be able to hold them off. But the guy I'm keeping an eye on is coming in a hurry is Kyle Busch. I mean, he's up to eighth place, and he's got a fast car. And we know he knows every... Uh, trick in the book on how to make passes, especially for the lead. I, I just, you know, even Logano, how strong he's been, and these other guys have made, you know, we've seen the four make a pass on him, but he was able to get right back by them. I, I just, you know, even if these two guys the, in second and third, the 19 of Truex and the four of Harvick, if they gang up on him and pass him, it just looks like Logano's so strong he's able to recover and get it back. Six caution flags today including the two stage breaks. Only two cars out of the race. Kyle Weatherman and Clint Boyer crashed out. They're your lap leaders on the lower left on the pylon with 37 to go. Mike, other than that brief moment when the 22 was back in traffic a little two bit. Two cars in the oh, wall, turn trouble. two. Trouble. And it looks like they're both get away, but have yeah, lost no, a ton no of momentum. So far. David, Reagan, David Reagan is Reagan. the uh, second of those two. 
And uh, his teammate Matt Tift was likely the other. They both got way high in turn number two, and at least one of them appeared to have contact. Aren't there. they teammates? They are. <laughs> hmm. Wouldn't want to be in that meeting. <laughs> and definitely it was Reagan in the fence. Here he comes to pit road. Yeah, he has damage to the front end and the right side. Second place. And you know, talking about second place, 19 of Mark Truex Jr., he didn't qualify very well. We know that he has a setup in this car that's really meant more for handling. I don't think he has the straight line speed of the four of Kevin Harvick or the 22 of Logano. It's going to take a lot for him to get a big enough run to get by Joey Logano. Is it going to happen in some lap traffic? Is it going to happen in this sequence, this green flag sequence that we're uh, possibly going to see here? There are ways to beat Joey Logano, but it is going to be tough. Jeff, I just I just look at his, I just looked at the, no, we, we talked to him about his numbers. First, 20 something. First, 30 something. First, 20 something. Last week he had a bad, he blew an engine at Pocono. Comes in here today. Numbers say he should be your winner. Three that's second why, places that's here. That's why I picked him. And <laughs> no <laughs> wins yet. 35 laps to go. We're going to take you Fox side by side. Thirty laps to go. This is the most laps that Joey Logano has ever led in a race at Michigan. 139 so far. Uh oh. And that's on that critical right Ooh, side of yes the radiator sir. opening for the 19 of Truex. You He's better get up there and get behind somebody. Get that off there in a hurry. Oh, oh there, there it goes. She went like that. <laughs> all clear. All clear. Clear by one over to one. Ty Dillon's just made a pit stop. Everybody is going to have to come in, right, Larry? At some point here. Yeah, Mike, we are right on top of what will be these green flag pit stops for pretty much everyone inside the top 10, except for Kyle Busch that I documented could go just a little bit further. So I would say anywhere in the next three, five laps, we're going to see all these leaders on pit road for that green flag stop. 
Uh, Larry, Larry, 30 laps to race. Yeah, I hate uh, to bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> but we were wondering, Larry. What is the trend? <laughs> well, they've been they've been kinder to me lately. And remember, these crew chiefs study the same trends I do. We're on top of those green flag pit stop. The average of the last caution, our last 10 trips to Michigan in June, is lap 170, which is 30 laps to go. But four times, it happened in the last 20 laps. So we are right there. And, okay. and Mike, I got to tell you something. The only car that I think has been able to pass that 22 and pass him has been the four. So if I'm Joey Logano and I see that four in my mirror, rear view mirror, I'd be a little bit worried. Well, and also, if this goes green and they pit under green, that's the only time that number one pit stall is a little bit of a disadvantage of how much momentum you can roll off of pit road to get up to speed. Here comes sixth place, Kyle Larson. in what he hopes will be his last stop of the day. And Regan's waiting on him. Well, Kyle Larson's car starts the runs too loose, but by the time he gets into dirty air, he's lacking front grip with the race car, so they're going to give him an adjustment for that, and four tires on his race car. A little surprised that they've chosen to do four tires here. He's going to have to hustle because the leaders are coming off four now. Here comes a four car into pit. But I guess they do need a good amount of fuel to get to the end. So Joey Logano now six tenths of a second up on Kurt Busch. Yeah, and I think it, you, you got to get it full of fuel, so you might as well get four tires because you're going to be sitting there anyway. Ryan Blaney in the pit lane. Here's Matt. Rodney Childers told Kevin Harvick to get his stage green. Some will take four, some will take two tires. It's going to be a long time on those left side tires. So they are going to go four here on the four. He said the car was starting to lose the nose near the end of that run. Joey Logano is also on his way to 12 of Blaney. He's leaving pit road now. Pretty decent stop by the four. Yeah, match. I thought it was. Yep. Kurt Busch is in. So is Martin Truex, Chris Buescher and Eric Almarola. Regan. Well, Martin Truex race car right now is getting better, but he's still too tight on the exit with that race car. It's going to be four tires for his race car. Kurt Busch on the left side of the screen. It's going to be two right sides. Two rights on the 19 also. Matt. Keep an eye on the 22. Look for right side tires only. Yes, that's the call, and he's away. A lot of wheel spin for Logano. Daniel Suarez is your new leader. Kyle Busch in second, Bowman third, Hemrick, and here's Suarez in the pit lane. Well, they're going to be quite a ways ahead of those guys that came in before them that took uh, four tires instead of two. Regan? Daniel Suarez, they've worked hard on that race car all day long to get it better. He's finally got it to where it's just a little bit too tight. Kyle Busch on the right side of your screen. Same situation. That race car's been too tight on exit. Finally making gains. Two tires for him. Alex Bowman in and out. Daniel Hemrick as well. Matt Benedetto making his stop. Slow car David Reagan in the back straightaway. Looks like he's been in the wall again, but we'll make it back to pit road and we will stay green. So that leaves the top 10 as having not yet stopped. Everyone back through Corey LaJoy. And Brad Keselowski, he stopped on lap. 133 so he, he you know he can go a little bit further here on fuel than some others. So Menard Newman and Matt Tift are due. David Reagan did make it to the pits. Jimmy Johnson in and out with his last stop. Paul Menard to the pit lane and Ryan Newman. So Brad Keselowski has cycled around to the lead from Denny Hamlin and William Byron who stopped six laps later the last time than anybody else except Ryan Priest, who now cycles up to fourth place. Now we still got to you know these guys are going to have to stop it's just a matter of when. Uh, I think the question is Logano took two tires Harvick took four tires. I understand why I think Logano needs to be out front. He said that over and over all afternoon. I think that's why he took two, so he would assure himself of being in the lead. 
when everybody cycles through. Well, right now, Joey has 1.3 seconds on Martin Truex, and that's uh, within a tenth of the lead that he had over Truex before the stops. But here's the big loser. They you know, chose to do four tires. Yes, if a caution comes out and lives up to the trends of Larry Mack, then those four tires might come in handy. But those other guys so far, by taking only two tires, came out of the pits with a huge advantage. Well, we're coming to uh, 20 laps to go, which means the trend would not be our friend. <laughs> not today. I just I just like the call that they made on the 22 car with those two tires. I think that was a good call. So there is Logano. He is currently seventh. The top six cars have not pitted. Now, Mike, there and are some hungry hounds after him. I will say that. And Harvick is 16th with those four fresh tires. Oh, the two car squeezing the 21 Menard up the racetrack. That got really, really tight for Brad Keselowski. Now, this is Paul Menard. I believe he's a lap down. He's trying to get back onto the lead lap. Right. He stopped just a little bit ago. Due in next uh, should be Hamlin, Keselowski, and Stenhouse. Ryan Priest. Up to fourth. Last pitted lap 139. He'll likely be the last to pit in this sequence. Here comes Keslaus. Here we come. Don't slide him. Don't slide him. Ten away. Don't Stenhouse slide. is pitted. Ooh, he came in there hot. He didn't slide him, Jamie. You hear him tell him, don't slide him. They're planning on either. Two tires or no tires, and it's no tires. Just enough fuel for Brad Keselowski. New leader is Denny Hamlin. From William Byron, Ryan Priest. 18 laps to go. Now Kyle Busch was eighth prior to the pit cycle when this all finishes up. He will likely be fifth. Mike, he made a huge gain in the pits. Uh, really gained a lot of distance. And that little group that uh, was behind Logano being pulled by Martin Trex Jr. and Kurt Busch, they are catching up in a hurry. And we know how good Kyle Busch is at attacking the entry of pit road. He's got a great pit crew who put together a great uh, two-tire stop. All that netted him a huge gain on the racetrack. It really did, and, and, and he's there. So if we stay green once these top four pit, Logano will once again be your leader. And Corey LaJoy has dropped off. He's come to pit road. And Denny Hamlin should be in this time, your race leader. That will leave just William Byron and, and Ryan Priest. And we expect Byron in a lap. Priest probably in the next two or three. Well, Matt, we've only got to, we'll have 15 laps to go when the leaders come by this time. So this is, it's it's showtime. Uh, you know, show us what you got. And I think I think Martin Trex Jr. is sitting in a great spot right now behind our leader here will be our leader, uh, the 22 car. This little group right here, this is where it's going to get interesting. William Byron is in. Giving up the lead. Ryan Priest, nine seconds back. Uh, he is coming this time, we're told, and he's in. So we have cycled through green flag pit stops. Joey Logano back to the lead. And Mike, if, if, unless there's a caution, the four car took four tires, and he is he's so far back. It would, it would take a caution for him to get back in the, get back up here and and be a factor as who's going to win. And there is the difference. Harvick with that four tire stop back in now. Uh, ninth place. Yeah it's a it's he's so far back and I mean we're only a few laps to go now we're coming to 14 to go. Harvick the uh, Hunt Brothers pizza cam. Looking across at Daniel Hemrick. Harvick up to eighth. Why is it when I think of Joy Logano and Martin Trex Jr., I, Martinsville comes to my mind? <laughs> I can't imagine. Why, why did that come into my mind? That? I don't know. 
It just does. Through this lap traffic, I was thinking that that might be Martin Truex Jr.'s best friend, but actually Lagama has been able to work his way through that traffic a lot better than Truex has. Well, that you know, Martinsville race last fall was a tough one for Truex. He passed Joey Logano without contact, ran him clean, expected the same, and didn't get it. Logano moved him to win to get in to the finale. Well, if he hadn't won that race, Logano, he wouldn't have won the championship. Correct. And, and I don't know if he was thinking that way or not, but that's how it turned out. I promise you when he gets to Martinsville this fall, <laughs> he'll be thinking about he'll be that. Thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you one thing I have been really, really impressed with. That 22 car has been able to maintain that distance between he and Martin Truex for the last several yes. laps. I thought Truex was going to get to him, but boy, Logano has really stepped it up. Now he's got Bubba Wallace between him. I thought Bubba Wallace had an engine problem, but obviously it's something else that broke on that 43 car when he had his issue. Now Bubba's all the way back in 29th, but at least he's still going. Yeah, there are only two cars out of the race, Kyle Weatherman and Clint Boyer. But Truex was the gainer on those green flag pit stops. It was 1.2 seconds was Logano's lead before the pit stop cycle. Now it's half that. Yeah, and I thought Kyle Busch, I mean, he's right here behind, not too far behind Truex. He was really, really coming behind the, by Kurt Busch here. He was coming in a hurry but then he kind of stalled out. I don't know if the tires, are, I don't know what happened, but he just stalled out. And right now, when I watch the lap times, I mean, Logano's about a tenth quicker than everybody else. You see Truex finally got by the lap car of Bubba Wallace. Only one more lap car in between them, but yeah, you know, I, I think Again, the only way that he's going to be able to get to Logano, he's got to have work behind him from the one car of Kurt Busch, from the 18. Those guys are going to have to work together to try to find a way to get to the 22, and then they're going to have to work together to pass him. We know how guys like to work together to try to help somebody pass to the lead. Well, worst news for the field, Joey Logano just ran his fastest lap of the race five laps ago. Wow. Well, Mike, I think he finally decided to hold it wide open. Because <laughs> he's going on now. That time by, he was a, about, <laughs> that was five tenths on that one lap. I know he, the, 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 uh, one, the 19 car caught traffic, but uh, still, he's just stretching, it, stretching out on those guys now. Only thing that's going to, the only way Joey Logano is not going to win this race is if we have a caution. And that could surely change things up. Kevin Harvick just logged his fastest lap of the race, but he is four and a half seconds back. Well, he's gained a second because not too long ago, he was five and a half seconds back. Ford Toyota Chevy in the top six spots. There are two of each make in this Motown showdown. Mike, this can turn into a real battle right here between Martin Truex and Kurt Busch. Uh, that one car is pretty quick. He's been all over the back of the 19. Hadn't got away, figured out a way around him yet. But and right behind him is the 18 of of Kyle Busch. That could turn into a real battle here at the end of this race. Eric Jones back down pit road. He is off sequence from an unscheduled stop earlier. Austin Dillon also making a stop here with nine laps to go. I think if I'm Kurt Busch, I want to get up behind that true car and push him and see if I can push him back up to Joey Logano. Well, and that's what it looks like Kurt is doing. Right now, they're working together to try to get, he knows if he gets side by side with the 19 of Truex, that's only gonna cost both of them time. They're gonna have no chance at winning this race. And I tell you that Kurt Busch, he's a smart kid and he knows that he needs to help Truex. If he's gonna get to the 22, he's gotta help him get there. Kurt said this week, he is open to doing another season with Chip Ganassi. He's having fun in the one car. Well, uh, we'll see how that sorts out. He said he was going to go to Le Mans with Chip and, and, and contemplate his future. Is that a French word? <laughs> it will be by the time he gets back. Hey, guys, they just closed it down another three tenths. They're within eight tenths of a second to closing up on Joey Logano right here. Great job that they're both doing. Yeah. You I see right there, Kurt Busch goes to the inside so he can hold it wide open. Here goes Kurt, uh, Kevin Harvick. Making a pass for seventh on Brad Keselowski. 
They're getting there. But you're exactly right. It's going to take a Toyota and a Chevy working together to beat that Ford of Joey Logano today. Well, they're going to get I, I didn't think they were going to get there. Logano had a really big lead on these guys. But man, the last couple of laps, they have closed the gap. And now they are there. And now the race is on. Yeah, they gained a lot that lap. Now they can really use the draft of the 22 car Joey Logano to close up. It's going to get really, really interesting, guys. Now you saw right there, Mark Trex Jr. pulled down to the bottom lane that the one of Kurt Busch had been using. That closed off the air to the one of Kurt Busch, and he fell back a little bit. Well, I think what happened, the 19 is getting the draft off to 22, and he's able to suck up, and I think it hurt Kurt a little bit. He fell back, so he's going to have to get back in line and pull back up behind the 19 car if he's going to have a shot. Well, we're five to go. Jamie Mack, you've driven this number one car here. Is Martin Truex going to need Kurt's help to make this pass? Man, it sure does seem like it, guys. And I, like I say, I think they're going to have to get to Joey Logano's outside to complete the pass. But what Kurt Busch is hoping is that Martin Truex and Joey Logano get side by side because we've seen it all day long. Those two cars will stall each other out, and he'll be sitting in the best position. Turn two, Eric Jones. Down in the grass after a spin. Let's see if he gets going with no caution, no caution yet, no caution yet. And yep. the caution is out. Yeah, that yeah. grass so wet from overnight rain. Uh, gonna be hard. Go down. And uh, hey, Mike, you see what? Watch the cars. There this you go. changes everything. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> this, this, this opens up a whole bunch of opportunities here for a lot of people well, to win this race. All I can think about right now is what this restart is getting ready to look oh, like. Oh, I know. Well, think about, look, the four cars got four tires better than anybody else. It could be big advantage for him. All right. Here's what happened to Eric Jones in turn two. Yeah, he knew he had oh, a yeah. problem. Probably yeah. had a tire going down. I think it's a yeah. left rear tire. Yeah. Tries to get it slowed down. When that left rear tire goes down, you got so little control over the car. You're better off with a right rear flat. Gets down on the apron. Yeah. But still just, whoa, whoa, man. That could so, so dangerous to go back up into the traffic on the Ooh. racetrack like that. I know he was just holding on. It wasn't his fault. He was holding on as best he could. Mike, isn't it funny how these races end up? I mean, here's Logano probably going to win this race if everything ends up, uh, you know, we stay green. <laughs> Guess what? We got a caution. Well, we had it all set up for Martin Truex and Kurt Busch to gang up on him. And if we've got three manufacturers and all three were going to be in the mix as they came around for the final couple of laps. But now we may end up in overtime. Well, this could be anybody. I mean, you think about Kyle Busch. He is great on restarts. And you think about the four car Harvick. He's got four tires a little bit better than everybody else. So this could be very interesting. Five laps to go. Logano and Truex have finished 1-2 on four occasions. Truex winning three of those. And, of course, Logano winning at Homestead last year to win the championship. How about this guy? He's had a pretty good day, too. Yeah. He down Daniel Hamrick. Ninth place. Now, guys, I, I just, again, I, I can't stop thinking about this restart that's about to happen. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, we know what the outside lane has been doing. And guess who's starting outside second row? Kyle, Kyle Busch. <laughs> you know he's going to make it interesting. Oh, yeah. And all across America, Thousands of fans are going, you had to bring that up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and other thousands of fans are going, all right, all right here we go. Yeah, listen, and, and I'll put the same amount of emphasis on his brother, Kurt Busch, who's going to be on the inside because Kurt's going to be trying to make it three wide to the inside. Kyle's going to be trying to make it three or maybe four wide to the outside. And here's the big difference about those front four. That number one car is the only one who has not been to victory lane this season. Hungry? You bet. Let's just go to overtime and figure it out. We'll come back and do just that.
Jesus. Joey Logano, Martin Truex, Kurt Busch, Ford, Toyota, Chevy, then Toyota, Chevy, Ford. And guess what's coming to NASCAR on Fox in two weeks. The NASCAR Cup Series is headed west to wine country. It's time to raise a glass to one of the best in the biz. Our very own Daryl Waltrip will boogity one more time as he wraps up a 19-year career with the Fox family. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing in wine country, boys. The drivers will need to think outside the oval as they make their way through the first road course of the season. It's time to go racing. Coverage begins 2 p.m. Eastern on FS1. We love road racing and we love wine country. Amen. This is going to be fun. And we it love is. DW. Yes, oh, sir. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I would ask Jeff how many races he won there, but <laughs> I'm not going until we get there. <laughs> when we get there. All right, tell me why this is going to be the biggest restart of the year so far. Look, you got Logano and Truex, history, Martinsville. You got two brothers, Kurt and Kyle, side by side, history, throughout their family. I mean, we got a we got this thing lining up. Could be a this could be the biggest restart of the year. Well, you got 550 horsepower, punching a big hole in the air. So it gives the advantage to those cars behind them to be able to maybe take them three, four wide. I don't think this is going to be the only restart we have here. <laughs> when you got Bowman up there, he's fifth. 88's got a good history at this racetrack. Right. Dale Jr. won here in that car. So I'm so this is this is as good as it gets. All right, let's start with Jamie Mack. Who wins? Guys, the Bush brothers are going to decide this because if Kurt <laughs> decides to push the 19, if Kyle, you know, earlier in the race we saw uh, Kevin Harvick go the outside of the 22. So Joey Logano is going to have his hands full. Does he block the outside with Kyle Bush? Does he block the inside with Kurt Bush to try to make it three wide? This, I tell you what, I started sweating when the caution <laughs> came out and thinking about all the different scenarios that are getting ready to happen this right now. This is when Jamie Mittmurray said, you know, this retired thing's not such it's a bad not idea. so bad. <laughs> Let me right. tell you, who wins? You take that whole crowd up there in the front row. Right now, the best restarter of the bunch, Kyle Bush. You hey, watch. Joey Logano's not a slouch himself. Be watching for him to put a pretty big block, and he's got TJ Majors helping him to do it by spotting for him upstairs. Well, the 22 is the best car, but the 18 is the best restarter. All right, it's overtime, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Green, white, checker. Two laps to settle it on Monday in Michigan. Prime time. Here we go. Checkers or wreckers? Logano with the big jump. Oh, I'll say. Didn't see that coming. You almost wonder if he didn't have maybe a first gear restart <laughs> to be able to get that jump. <laughs> he had a turbo. Oh, they're going to get to the outside of Kyle Busch here. Oh, they're working Is that him Suarez? over. Yeah, Suarez looking on the outside. Three wide up off turn two. That'll allow the leaders to scoot away a little bit. Oh, Logano this, and Truex. This is not turning out the way I no, thought it was. Not at all what I was thinking this was going to go like. But they haven't made it in the third turn yet. <laughs> and look at Kurt Busch to the bottom. He is there for second place. Can he wow. get a big run here? Looking for his first win of the year. We're going to take the white flag under green. Uh, Next flag ends Here's the race. It's going to get ugly. I think it's going to get big and ugly down here in turn three or turn two. Oh, dang, that's turn one. <laughs> that turned down there, that one. <laughs> Keslowski to the inside on Suarez. And the front three get away. It's going to be Logano, Kurt Busch, or Martin Truex. I am just incredibly impressed with the 22 of Logano, Todd Gordon, that whole team. I mean, they have done everything right today, including that last restart. Started from the pole, got the number one pit stall, and coming to the line. I'd say that he's probably going to take home the victory. Joey Logano by two car lengths over Kurt Busch and Martin Truex. Get that, guys. Hell yeah. Perfect job, everybody. Way to execute a race. Hell yeah. He's right, across the board. That's the way we do it, boys. Awesome job. Good job, TJ. We're out a couple of batteries up there. Joey, drove your butt off. Thank you, guys. Awesome. 23rd career victory for Joey Logano, the reigning NASCAR champion. Gets the congratulations for Martin Truex out on track. Or, or he's saying, you got me <laughs> yeah. on that restart. I mean, And from Kurt Busch. He led 161 laps, and he was hard to handle, even on this last restart. Man, look, he I mean, he, he jumped in jump. the gas, and the rear tires spun a little bit, but then it launched. I just really believe 
he was in a different gear than some of these other guys on that restart to be able to get that launch. He's been in a different gear than the other guys <laughs> all day long. <laughs> Look at this. A two car length win for Logano. Making me dizzy. I think I just saw him do about 15 <laughs> donuts. Today's victory was fueled by Sunoco. Sunoco, fuel your best. And, and, and he nailed it. It's just like he said, way to execute. The pit crew executed, the spotter executed, the driver executed. Perfect race. On a day when his car owner, Roger Penske, was being honored at the White House for his Indy 500 victory with Simon Pagano, Joey Logano scores for the captain and for Ford. Yeah, in Newgarden. In Michigan. Newgarden won Saturday night in Texas for the yep. captain. So a big weekend again for Roger Penske. See that M logo? That was the original logo of Michigan International Speedway, built in 1968, part of Larry LePayton's Speedways, Inc., later acquired by Roger Penske, who turned this into one of the show places of the sport. I thought that stood for money, because that was a money lap that Joy Logano <laughs> just ran. And we all got to see a show here today in Michigan. What a race. Now that's a great job, Joy. Take a bow, brother. I tell you, I just really am impressed with what this team is. Joy Logano has a, been a great champion for our sport. He's out promoting the sport in a positive kind of way. Good man. Good man. Matt Yo comes with him. Three wins at the Michigan International Speedway. Three wins from the pole. MVP awards for every department, but especially on that restart. What did you learn on the restarts before that you executed on the last one? <laughs> I can't tell you everything I learned, but it's, uh, you know, you, you, you race this whole race and you, you keep building that notebook up. But man, what a, a great execution day from our, our, our race car. Obviously, it was very fast. Our pit crew is amazing. TJ Majors, my spotter, spotted his butt off up there. The race fans sticking around to Monday. You guys are the best. We love coming up here to Michigan. There's nothing like bringing a Ford to Victory Lane in their uh, home turf and Roger Penske's cars as well. There's no better feeling than that. This is a big win for us. You know the importance of this event for Ford Motor Company, the Michigan Heritage Trophy. Once again, Edsel Ford will keep it for another race here at MIS. He made it known how important it is and how, how uh, racing is in their, their blood at the Ford Motor Company and, and the Ford family in particular. And uh, I couldn't be more proud to be able to deliver that for him. The Ford family won the first and the 100th here at MIS. All right, Kurt Busch comes home in second place today. I saw you look at that right rear quarter panel. Was that the difference right there? Yeah, that's that's more than what I was hoping to see for damage, but I, I had a blast. I mean, that was the tightest I ever put my belts at the end of a race because we got enough stage points today. I was like, hell with it. We don't need to get anything but the win. And we got second today. Logano's car was tough. Uh, I really wanted it to go green at the end with Truex. I was just going to push Truex straight through the 22. That was my best shot at it. But what a day for our Camaro um, from Chevy and Monster. Thank you, guys. It's, we'll get it. We'll get it. It just gives us reason to smile and be happy. We ran up front. We were strong. We were in our manufacturer's backyard, but got second today. A close second for Kurt Busch. Two car lengths, 16 one hundredths of a second was the margin. More to come from Michigan as Joey Logano celebrates.
Congratulations to Coca-Cola Racing family driver Joey Logano for his big win here today in Michigan. Well, the point standings may shake up just a bit, but Kevin Harvick still ahead of those. Kurt Busch closing of those who have not won behind those in yellow who have won. There's your top 10, and the cutoff now is Jimmy Johnson plus three over Ryan Newman wow. for 16th to make the playoffs. In 1966, Joey, Henry Ford went to Le Mans, and he had a little card he gave to every driver and crew chief it said, you better win, <laughs> HF the second. What did Edsel Ford tell all of you Thursday night at dinner that put the fear of losing in all the Ford drivers? Yeah, almost exactly identical <laughs> words to that. <laughs> you better not lose. He, he told us how important it was, and uh, I wish he was able to be here today. But, uh, man, this feels so good. Winning at Michigan means so much to Team Penske and, and, and Ford. And being able to pull in this victory lane and see everybody means so much. But, man, a day like that, you don't get those days all the time. You the best car, best team. Uh, we executed perfectly all the way through and uh, ultimately able to bring this Shell Penzo forward in a victory lane. I just can't thank everyone. You know, at the shop enough, everybody that builds this thing, <laughs> Roush Shades Motors, uh, Money Lion, uh, SKF, everybody that helps out throughout this whole thing, wheels up. This is just, a, uh, man, an amazing feeling getting into victory lane. I, I've, we've been so close this year to get into victory lane multiple times, and we've been coming up short, and mainly because of execution. And today, uh, everything was cleaned up perfectly, and we did a great job, and, um, and this is what we get. So. Uh, hopefully we can start stacking up some more here. Well, you sure spanked him today. Go celebrate. Well yeah. done. And Joe, I think right, you're going to have all those other teams looking at your telemetry on that restart, buddy. Good job. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you make your own luck. Well done. All right, let's uh, go to Regan with the runner-up. Martin Shrex Jr., a third-place finish. So you had that bottom line on that final restart. Was that the frustrating part? Um, yeah, I mean, no. I mean, I, I felt like before that we were going to finish second, you know, no matter what. And my mindset there was, ah, it's a call. you know, we got a, at least we got a shot at it here. Rack them up, you know, have a green-white checker and see. But uh, I don't know. My, my my second year was off a little bit all day on restarts, so I was getting jumps. But then the 22 just went like a whole car length before the restart zone. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know how you get away with that. I thought we were supposed to go in the box, but. Aside from that, great day for auto owners, Toyota, uh, everybody back at JGR, thank you, TRD, everybody, and uh, we had a solid race car. It's just, man, you got to be so patient in this racing. It's really, it's really hard. Early in the race, I kept getting runs and going underneath guys and beating them through the corner, but if you can't clear them, you just, you lose two or three or four spots every time. So it's frustrating at times, but um, everybody did a good job. We had a, um, a fill in. Uh, right rear, a rear tire changer this weekend, and, you know, that's a lot of pressure to come in on. He's a young kid, and he did a good job there, so. Hey, great job, everyone. Uh, up, came up a little bit short, but a, a solid day for us here. All right, nice job, Martin. Well, Kevin Harvick led 15 laps today and overcame quite a bit. Lap down at one point, you fought back, but you were the only one to take four tires there at the end, Kevin. Were you on board with that call when you made it? Uh, I mean, you know, we had a really fast uh, bush light forward and, and just uh, made a lot of mistakes today. Thank you. Joey Logano just spanked the field. Today. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Well, some Dominance. days you just get it all right. Yep. You know, some days you got the, you got the number one pit stall. You started on the pole. You led the most laps, and you won the race. And you have the that's, fastest car. That's and the you max have the points. best restart. That's max points. Yeah. He said it all weekend. I need to be out front, and that's where he kept it. <laughs> he did. Well done. Tonight on FS1, Canada versus Cameroon. That's coming up. Fox Soccer tonight, and then MLB Whip Around. We'll have Father's Day weekend off, and then we'll be back Sunday, June 23rd from Sonoma, the Toyota Save Mart 350. Coverage beginning a week from Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Going to get to go do a little road racing. Yes, sir. Can't wait. Can't wait. Love road racing. Got the carousels back. Yes, sir. That's right. Different track. Going to be a whole different challenge out there at Sonoma. Different track for some. I mean, I ran the carousel. I kind of know what it feels like. Now. It'll be a new challenge for many. NASCAR Race Hub, weeknights here on FS1. Joey Logano by two car lengths, picking up his 23rd career victory. Logano, Team Penske, and Ford celebrate in Detroit's backyard.
after leading the most laps and dominating every restart. Well done. See you in Sonoma, folks.